Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Denai. Thank you so much for coming here. If you're new to this channel, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel. Replay gang, I'm so sorry that you was not here to enjoy this exclusive live that we have with Jaguar right now. A lot of people have did interviews with her. A lot of people run her name for cloud content. I'm here to ask the serious questions, the real questions to get real answers. All right. In addition to that, uh, these questions that I will be asking her came from a compiled list of people um, that know her in real life. Um, Jaguar Wright's family is welcome to this platform. As I've told her family and as I've ever told her, we're going to have some respect and decorum, um, even if that means moving one person down while the other person speak and vice versa, playing it like that. you know. And just full disclosure, I'm sick and tired of people exploiting Jaguar Wright's name. And there's a difference between exploiting and just covering content, right? Y'all know anytime Jack White Wright went to jail, I was like, hey, let's not talk about it. Let's leave it alone because I felt she was in a position or a place to get the help that she needed. That was my stance, right? Um, and in addition to that, I keep seeing people just antagonizing and making up their own narratives and storylines based on her content and, you know, oversaturation. So I don't want to talk about Jack White Wright all the time. I don't. But there's an audience for it. There's a niche for it because so many people keep antagonizing her to respond. And she has antagonized people as well. But me personally, as I've told many of you a long time ago, months ago, I talked about Jaguar, right? Because I felt like she reminded me of someone dear to me in my real life. And if I could help her, it would somehow vicariously heal uh, the relationship I had with someone who's now my ancestor, right? Um, full disclosure, a lot of you might not like this Jaguar might not like this, but I feel like when people are on certain paths for an extended amount of time, God continues to try to redirect them and send people um, in their life, like TJ's and Jaguar Wright's life right now, to kind of help them get back on track. And I feel like if Jag does not change for the better, um, you know, God will call his children home at some point in time. That's not me wishing bad or anything. So that's just to put it out there that my intentions for this conversation with Jaguar Wright is completely uh, great. It's, there's no malice here. And hopefully we can humanize her in a way in which that she can move on with her YouTube career as well as her personal life without being an antagonized and agitated by so many of these different people um, that got the most shit the same, but the less in their bank account. You know, but anyways, thank y'all so much for being here. Um, I got a couple of special guests, a couple of people coming through. Appreciate y'all, Jag and TJ. Jen. Yes, I am definitely the channel manager. Um, that's something that I'm doing to help her, not to explore her, not to get my cloud up or weight up. I'm definitely going to help her. So when Jaguar tell you that you're struck, you definitely want to be struck. Okay, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we're going to get into the content right after this break. Hey, welcome back. Thank you so much. I got Jag and TJ on the stage. I also have Esoteric, who is my friend. Um, and you know, she's been my friend for some time. She was a she was a true friend. When everybody left me, she was here to consult me and we talked a lot over the phone. I absolutely tr uh, trust her judgment. She has been well informed about a lot of the Jaguar Right content and so forth. So I have her here as a special guest to guest to kind of help me um, I guess moderate this discussion. And so welcome, Esoteric. Welcome, TJ and Jack. How y'all feeling? Peace. Oh, we're great. Hey. <laughs> Greetings, Our... everyone. Hello. Greetings. Hi. Hi. Welcome, welcome. Okay. So let's get into it. So, Jag, um, I decided to manage your channel for two reasons. Um, and that is to the benefit of you and TJ to show you guys how to get monetized um, and also to help you when it comes to the exploitation of your content, of how people are using you to make money and so forth. And in regards to people using your content, do you feel as if people using your content, spending their own interpretation of what 
you're saying, does that cause you some kind of mental anguish? Okay. There's three ways I can answer it. I'll choose one. Everything is content. Me coming to YouTube wasn't even my idea. I had no idea that I was going viral on YouTube until someone called me and told me. And I looked and I saw all of my Instagram videos plastered all over YouTube. Which I come to learn that, you know, that's not behind a paywall. So whoever grabs it can grab it. Um, and then that's how I built my persona on YouTube to begin with. And it wasn't me posting. I didn't even start a channel for damn near a year. So it's like, you know, I don't have a problem with using content. I don't. I, I'm, I believe in content creation. I am an artist. My life has revolved around content before content was content. You know what I mean? So it's like, we're all good there. But if you're going to steal or use or borrow, don't publish lies all over it. You can say whatever truth you want to say. But when you start making up blatant lies and attaching them to my likeness, my image, and my name, that's a problem. Period. It's lack of integrity. It's hacky. And it's corny. And it's played out like a jerry curl. So, yeah. That's how I answer that. So... Basically, your issue is not with people using your content, but it's how they're choosing to use it is what your issue is. Oh, absolutely. I'm a journalist. I'm a published writer. I mean, if you're going to you dip can't... into the world of content creating, journalism and broadcasting, then goddamn, please be a little professional. A little. I'm not asking for the moon here. If all you want to call yourself is a commentator, then please be a commentator. But you stop being a commentator when you start publishing things that are not true as facts, even if you're saying it's your opinion. There is a specific content creator right now that created a story Don't saying that I oh dv my, my girlfriend. Not One true. Second. Jay, we're not going to say anybody's name over here because they live. I didn't life. say the name. I just want to know. And I will not say any of those. I will not I will not speak of a struggle channel's name, not on this day. And also, um, Salt Shakers in the chat saying fair use, opinion free speech. You're absolutely right, but there's a game behind it. Fair use is actually a legal defense. So if Jag decides to say, I don't like the way this person is covering me, or I need to strike out this struggle channel that's using my content and Jag files a copyright strike and knows how to actually pursue it, even if YouTube disagree with her, then their platform will in fact be a down for two weeks. That's a fact. So it's not really about, you know, it's about how you play in this game and stuff like that. And when you necessarily depend on going live to steal other people's content. And guess what? All of that is still cool. It's fair game. It's the wild, wild west. But anything that you take from behind my paywall it's not fair use or fair game. Period. And um, you were saying, in context, in context of that, you said earlier that you know you had realized that you was going viral on YouTube, and then you came over. So, do you feel like people have created this Jaguar right persona that you've been upholding, or what? I show people what I want them to see. They interpret it as they see fit. I appreciate critical thinking and I don't really much trust people that agree with everything that I say. I'm perfectly fine with banter. It's lies. I have a problem with it's slander. I have a problem with. There's a new rumor running around the verse now that I called CPS on Naisha. That came out of thin air. There was another story that was published that um, Naisha called police and filed a police report against me for threatening her in the middle of the night. Also not true. Um, the fact that people keep saying I wear diapers when I don't. Not true. Um, you know, I, I, I could go one after the other. It's just lies. 
or like the person that said they were in the courtroom with me the last time and I was there begging for my freedom. Not true. Never happened. I don't have a problem with you talking about what's there. I have a problem with you making up what is not there. Inventing false realities and attaching them to someone's name. Especially someone with a name that gets as much traffic on the internet as mine. Slander and defamation, period. Do you think, like, because, see, the thing about it is, people are allowed to change, right? And, Jag, I feel like since you've been on YouTube, there has, like, I feel like if Jaguar changes take accountability, whatever that looks like, and actually change, people will pour into you because I don't think people hate you. People pull up and hear people talking shit about you. People don't you. understand me. Mm -hmm. And guess so what? When, when I'm not for everybody. Night and day in hell. What up? What up? Mine. What's up, night and day? I, fuck, I definitely rock it though. Ooh, I don't like how that was. But anyways, um, okay, so mm -hmm. that's going on. So people have created a narrative that you call CPS on Aisha. The reason people are reluctant to believe in it is because there was another narrative that you called CPS on Tasha K. Is that I true? did. Yes, I did. I think you skip me, I did. I think they're confusing from that um, incident and bringing it, creating a false narrative. But it's those other struggle channels that are doing that BS. I cannot stand those broads. I can't. Even, I mean, hey, I, I don't have no problem admitting to what I do, but I'm not. I'm not going to plead guilty to a crime I didn't commit. I I don't know a person with common sense that would. I don't have a problem with people talking about me, especially what I do. But when you start inventing things, that's where we got a problem. Right. Absolutely. So we, we got that under control. And just for y'all to know, like, we don't give a damn. Shit, if you're in the game of invention, you should quit YouTube and fucking create a product that'll sell. If you're in the game of invention. Jack, yeah, are you familiar exactly. with someone named Crazy Alice? Yeah, I know Crazy Alice from South Dallas. Okay, because somebody in the chat wrote something and I thought they were just blowing smoke. No, I, I met her in um, the psych ward at Parkland back in March. Okay, so this, this one commentator put, you said you wear them to throw them in a bitch face during a fight. You said you learned it from Crazy Alice from South Dallas. I'm sure she was playing. That's what's hilarious. she talking about i don't even know what she's talking about she's talking about um that you wear diapers and you throw them in people's face so it's just no 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 i said crazy alice from south dallas was taking her damn diaper and wiping it all over the day room tables that's what i said oh <clears throat> jesus christ <laughs> So um, I, I wanted I wanted to say this. We we got a long list of questions that are very serious. Um, beyond Let's the scope do it. of YouTube, that we need to get. To. And I appreciate it. Uh, as Eric is here to help me um, organize it. So let's get straight to it. Who's who's audio is that? That's you, Jack. Um. So let's get to it, Jack. And I told you, and I tried to call you, and I told you that these were going to be uncomfortable questions. He was like. You just want them flat out. So I'm going to ask these questions. And, you know, if you decide to say something that conflicts with any information that I've received or anything that has been stated already on YouTube, I'm going to hold you accountable. Okay? Okay. All right. First of all. This should um, be easy. I don't lie. Okay. So you've basically, your whole family is on the internet. What made you feel comfortable bringing out and telling your family's business on YouTube? Well, first things first, my whole family ain't on YouTube. The people that you're calling my whole family are a very small set of people that have had issues with me for decades and I, I have issues with them. So it's not my whole family. Um, number two, this all starts back in 2020. During um. COVID, when it first really hit hard. And uh, I had started my women's group. 
WCW. And we were opening up the Zoom room every week and we had meetings and we gathered, of course, on Wednesday. And um, as the women in the room started sharing their stories and things started getting more and more real, I started realizing all of us had one thing in common. The abuse that we experienced in our adult lives, the open door came from our childhood abuse in our family. And you said that was in 2020. What month? Yes, yeah, this, this was late summer, early fall 2020, before the Tasha K interview, which led to surviving Jaguar, right? Um, and, and if you don't mind me asking, and I really, because I had to. Jack, Jack, if you don't mind me asking, just so well, I was trying to answer the answer. first question. Go ahead. Um, so yeah, um, I decided to start sharing my personal life story, um, to be transparent about that, to encourage others, because what I came to believe and understand and know is that we treat it like it's not an epidemic african-american families with intra-family sa we act like it's not an epidemic and it is so i decided if i was going to ask people to speak i needed to be able to do the same myself and i shared my family story my story what i experienced my history what i knew they were okay with me exposing the industry, but they were not okay with me telling the truth about our family. And um, not long after that, they had a meeting. And then that's when they started reaching out to bloggers. And then they reached, they started talking, you know, people were talking about Tasha K talking to the family after the interview. So I sent Tasha K their phone numbers and said, call them. I want to hear what they got to say. I gave her my ex-husband's phone number. I gave her my little cousin Danica phone number. I told her to call her. And they did what they so, did. So this happened in 20, you, you 2020. Said late summer, right. And around this time, and where I want to go, around this time is the incident that happened with Giovanni, correct? No. Giovanni died two years before. Two years before. Okay. Um, so let me back up before, and I definitely want to get into Giovanni, but let me go into this issue with your family. Um, are you... Do me a favor when we talk about my, my transition, son. Please tread lightly. I will. I will. I promise you I will. Thank you. Um, and I'm going to ask real questions. I'm going to ask it with... That's the fine. Sentence. I don't have a problem with questions. I just said, uh, please tread lightly. I will. I promise. So... Uh, this small sector of your family that you have a problem with are those yeah. that you actually, your sister, her offsprings, is it because they testified against you to help Sam Sr. get custody of Sam Jr.? They never testified. They never went to court. Mm -hmm. They didn't even show up to court to support me. Matter of fact, uh, Lachelle is the one that told me I was going to lose. Sam assured her I was going to lose and to take a deal and go to prison, I beat the charges, two felonies on an election year a month later. Fuck out of here. Now, what was what's the rest of it? Uh, what was your relationship with you and Giovanni? What was it Complicated. like? Um, Complicated. Complicated like, like any relationship is with any teen mother and her child. Complicated. Was, was you and Giovanni beefing about money, specifically your mother's check? No, no we were beefing about him being back on drugs, about him relapsing and getting back on pills while he was on probation and having to take uh, random UAs. We were also beefing about the fact that my god sister who was living down there was helping them run licks. They was, they was breaking into fucking houses. And my god sister Dion had my oldest son and the oldest son that she had down there, my nephew Daniel, who we brought down from Philadelphia to save his life after he got shot in the head and shot five times. And we had to nurse him off the of ICU. Yeah, um, they was out was, running lit. They was out running lit. And I was pissed the fuck off about it. Because he had made such 
progress. And I told him, leave Philly in Philly. When you come here, clean slate, new life. Giovanni had a job in 72 hours working as a forklift driver at, at a factory here, making $25 an hour damn near the second he started. That's pretty good. He got involved with good. the wrong girl. Guess how he met that girl? Guess how I met that girl? Through fucking Nicole Allen. And guess what? She encouraged my son back on drugs, and her name is Summer Nixon. I was helping develop her. She wanted to sing. So and that um, was that when the cold promise to the world and then left her high and dry. And then I brought her into our home so she ain't had to be living in her car. Yeah. That's, that's yeah, no, me and my son didn't argue about money. Matter of fact, him and Summer, when they moved in together in the room in the place in DeSoto, the first place that we had, me and my mother agreed to give them six months free, no rent, no bills, just so they could stack cash every day. Got a job for Summer over at Papa Do's right there in Duncanville. Arguing about money. See what I'm saying? Like, you sitting here getting all of this information from niggas that weren't even around. When we moved to Texas, we invited Lachelle, we invited the family to come and visit. And guess what? The niggas was too cheap to buy a plane ticket. We invited them for Thanksgiving. We invited them for Christmas. None of them came. So, uh, next. next question. Yeah, next question. Um, and, and shout out to Giovanni. He got a job with the seventy-two hours for at the company. Yeah. Why? Why was he out of school for three years? Because I'm hearing that you kept him out of school for three years. No, Giovanni yeah. wasn't out of school for no three years. I didn't keep him out of school for no three years. He hooked. Then while I was on the road, my mother went behind my back and put him on homeschool. I was touring in Japan and Europe, paying all the bills. When I came home, yeah, well, we decided to start doing homeschooling. So we tried that for a while. And guess what? As I would go on the road and come back, even though my mother was a school teacher, she wasn't doing none of his fucking schoolwork. So we had to get him caught up. And then we took him back out of um, homeschool. And then that's when he started going to Voorhees Middle. Like, I really don't understand. How people want to talk about my child when apparently they know nothing. You can go back and check the school records. He went to Signal Hill, the elementary, when we lived in Voorhees on Quail Hollow. And then from there, he went to Voorhees Middle. He went to school with Asia Sparks. He went to school with uh, Lachelle's kids too, right? No, he didn't. Jamie and Jasmine went to Overbrook when they lived in Berlin. They never went to Voorhees schools because they had to use my mom's address because they were fucking homeless. Those kids never went to school together. They went to school together. I know John F. Kennedy when they were very, very young. But after the third grade, my sister went living in a trailer park somewhere and the kids was about to get taken from, um, uh, from Child Protective Services because her in-law said she was a shit mom and they was going to take them. So she moved back in with my mom and the girls went to school in Berlin. Giovanni went to school in Voorhees. See what I'm saying? Has anybody told you the truth about anything? Uh, th that's why we're here, Jay. We're here. Um, My son question. went to Signal Hill. Then from Signal Hill, he went to Voorhees Middle. Then from Voorhees Middle, he went to um Eastern. He played on the football team, D one school. So next, also next when question, he got Jay. involved in pills, partying with the partying with the you know the athletes. Well, well I, I've I've literally spoken to your family numerous times and they say he never Who's gave saying birth. that I'm really capping? How you gonna how you gonna tell me I'm capping? Do me a favor. That's Everything that I'm saying, I'm that's speaking your niece. directly. You can go and check the records for yourself. But but that's your niece, that's Jamie that's saying that you're capping. Just full disclosure. Twerk um, sister? I, that, that God, really? That's your screaming twerk sisters? Ain't you a little old for that, Toots? Oh, my God. Jesus. Um, Talking about I'm um, capping. Yo ass went to Overbrook. Yo ass went to Kennedy. You know where you went to school, Jamie? 
when your mama wasn't buying you no school clothes and y'all was stealing clothes, get sweatsuits and shit out of Giovanni's uh, closet? You remember Jamie? When y'all would come over my house and stay tonight and I'd cook for y'all and there would be all kinds of foods and treats and all those things. And then I'd get up on Sunday, I'd cook a big brunch and then we'd all go bowling in Marlton up Route 73. Remember? Shit that your mom never did because the bitch ain't had no fucking money. Well, can you, like, Jay, me and you had a conversation. And I told Giovanni you never went to Overbrook. Giovanni went to Eastern and you know it. You couldn't go to Eastern because I didn't let y'all use my address. Sam said he didn't want shit to do with Shelly or y'all. That's why y'all couldn't go to school in Voorhees. Sorry. You couldn't go to school with the rich black kids. Sorry. <coughs> Sorry you had to do the middle class thing, but, you know, it could have been worse. Y'all could have been going to school over there by the trailer <laughs> park. Thank God for my mom and pop pop. Thank God you were able to use their address. Y'all some ungrateful motherfuckers. You were saying next question. Next, but Jay, can you can you like because ultimately, like if we want a solution and we want this to stop, like you're saying, you calling the motherfuckers and all. I have one thing for them. No, to I'm sorry. I'm saying. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm gonna do my best to try to tone it down, but it's just ridiculous. The lie, like in my candy voice, the lies, like. Everything that I say is backed up by school records, doctor's records, mortgages, all of that. These kids know that. That goes to show exactly how fucked off my sister raised them. She was a terrible influence. She should never been allowed to raise children. Period. Well Man, you can't you can't say that as a black woman. Yes, I can say that. She's the worst mother no, no, no. I've ever known. She's the okay, worst mother me, I've ever known. Let me ask you the next question. Let me ask you this next question, right? Did you wish Giovanni a happy birthday before his un, un, untimely passing? Did you wish him Yes, a happy I did. And next question before we move on to something else. Did you I surely you did on his 25th birthday? I sent a message because he was living right next door and I was downstairs with my god sister. And I did my sneaky little thing that I always do. I cooked one of his favorite meals at Dion's place. And even though we weren't speaking because we were mad, we were beefing about his choices. He sent my godsons down because they would all hang up because they, they had a little pre-production studio. And they were, they were writing songs and Giovanni was about to start recording his EP. But either Daniel would come or Keith would come down to Dion's apartment. And Giovanni would be like, yo, go get me a plate. Go get me a plate. So I always, anytime I cook, I made extra. But right before his birthday, um, I cooked one of his favorite meals. My uh, vegan pepper steak with uh, rice and peas, collard greens, cornbread. And so next thing you know, me and Dion went out for a little bit, and when we came back, like over half the pan was gone. And I'm like, I know them boys ain't eat. They was like, no, Giovanni sent us down here to get a plate. So, um, and then I told Dion because she said she had to go over there to um ask Giovanni about something because it was something with the leasing office and that crazy girl Erica that he was sleeping with there. Um, but um. I said, did make you, sure you tell you him that I tell, said. One second. Did you ever tell Giovanni that he was not non-existing to you? You know, we can't say that word. Because I'm hearing that for three years, all the way leading up into his untimely passing, you Yeah, no, that's dead. not true. Me and my son both said mean and cruel things to each other throughout the years. And guess what? That happened between me and my son, and that ain't nobody's business. All right, so that's what that's what happens. Question. That's what happens with parents and children, especially when they become grown. They want to do it their way. You're telling them this way has danger. This way has harm. They disagree with you. You get into an argument. They go about their business. You go about yours. When cooler heads prevail, you talk. You work it out. I just didn't get that time. Because he was transitioned. Uh, I had already got the tickets for the Dallas Cowboys game and, and playing the Philadelphia Eagles. I was going to surprise them. 
I had just got the LLC. I wanted to give it to him because he was making his music and I wanted him to have his own label, his own imprint to put his own music out on. All of that's in the record. You can see when Dallas W was registered and bought. He was dead two days after that. So your sister and your nieces have consistently said that Giovanni was like a brother to them. Um, I'm sure. After all they stole from him. They stole a lot from my son. You want to know what's really funny? Michelle likes to sit here and talk all this crap, but she don't talk about the fact that before we left Philly, before all of us left Philly, when my son got arrested that first time, I got my lawyer to work it out. So all he had to do was drug court and I had to go to jail and do no time. He was on probation. For whatever reason, he decided he was going up the ante and not sell weed, but sell heroin and coke. My sister was one of his um, customers. And the agreement between them was that he would only serve as her if she didn't tell me that he was um, selling drugs again while he was doing drug court in Philly. Now, I just want to ask you a question. If your nephew, who you so-called love so much, is making an awful life choice, and his mother went through all of this trouble to get one of the best attorneys in Philadelphia to work it out so he didn't have to do 18 months and five years probation and only a year and a half in drug court. Why would you sit there and agree to keep his selling not weed, but coke and heroin? That's even worse. Let me let me ask you in, in me exchange, ask you no question. in exchange in exchange for silence. That's how much getting high meant to her. But you love me, my son, me, fuck you, bitch. Oh, no. You don't love my son. Oh, you never no, yeah, listen to I, me. You never loved my son. Yeah, you were yeah. jealous of my son. You know what she used to tell Giovanni when I was pregnant with Sam? She told Giovanni that because I had him out of wedlock and Sam was born in wedlock, that I was never gonna love him the same, that Sam was going to be more important to him, and he was gonna be treated like the bastard, so he should prepare himself for it. Now, when Giovanni came to me and told me that. It really bothered me. And the reason why it bothered me because I heard those words before, but they came out of Shelly's mouth. Because see, my Aunt Debbie, the one I call fifth, my mom's sister who's always been jealous of my mom, she used to tell Shelly that when my mom was pregnant with me. I went to Lachelle and I said to her, point blank and period, if you ever Spit that poison to my child again. I'm going to fix your problem. Your childhood is not my son's childhood. Don't ever talk to my kids like that again. Uh, last question. Before, Jack, last question. Um, do you regret, because the whole internet scene, the whole world, millions of people have seen. You talking about the ashes? Do you regret doing it? I don't regret doing anything that I do. I don't believe in regret. I did it. It happened. If you don't understand what I did, that's fine. Move on. I did. But what? What did you? Why did you throw his ashes on people? Ain't nobody's business. I'm. I'm not like everybody else. I respond to things differently than other people. I don't got to explain what I did. You know what? Let's make it simple. How about this? Boom. My mom don't do drugs. Yes, she do, and you know it. You know your mother's a drug addict. She might be retired, but it's on the jacket. That's why y'all act so weird. All them drugs she did when she was pregnant with you. All right. Anyway, like I would say, I smoke weed. And I smoke weed. Your mother smoked crack, though. Now, like I was saying, um, where was we at? Why you put the yeah. yeah, I don't, I don't have to explain my practices or what I do. I'm a 46 year old grown ass woman. I don't have to explain myself to anyone about anything I do. If you don't like it, don't watch. Y'all watched. You rewinded it. You reposted it. You made memes. 
clearly it didn't offend y'all that much if it if it was content. Move on. That's my answer. All right, let's move on. He's my to son. I gave birth to him. And I sat there with his dead body. All these people in his chat that say say they love my son. Where were they when his dead body was laying on a slab? Where were they? Where were they the day of his funeral? Where? They were in Philly. Throwing their own little fake funeral without a body. And then turned around and got his best friend killed. And that happened in front of Sam. On his brother's funeral. On the day of his brother's funeral. Which he was not allowed to go to. He had to watch his, his brother's best friend be murdered right in his face. And, and that was right there. On the 4700 block of Hawthorne Street. Where Debbie lives. Where Shelly and all them used to hang. My ex-husband Sam was there. Like all of these little, all this little group of hate. That's where they were. They weren't at Giovanni's funeral in Dallas, Texas. At Dallas City Temple Seventh Day Adventist Church. Oh no, no, no. They were not there. They were on the 4700 block. Of, of, of uh, Hawthorne Street. In Frankfurt, Philadelphia. Nowhere near his body. Getting his best friend killed. And it's a shame because that boy had just had a baby. That boy had just had a baby. And Sam they, watched oh, him get murdered. Sam watched him get shot in the face right in front of him, huh? How did it happen? Why are you blaming your family for the best friend? Has, like, I don't understand. It. Because if they had a bit of Giovanni's funeral, that wouldn't have happened. The funeral was in Dallas. They decided they were going to rebel against me and have their own party and had my son there they knew the kind of shit my son was doing in them streets i got him out of philadelphia to save his life because all of his friends were getting murdered they know that and guess what just like in pure philadelphia fashion which is why i didn't have a funeral in philly because if his friends had a came they'd have shot up the church now they decided to have a block party without asking the police to guard the block. Niggas came up with AKs? Blowing people's brains out. In front of my only living child. That's what they did. If you weren't at his funeral. If you didn't sit with his body. If you weren't there the day that he got cremated. If you weren't there when we went to Joe Pool Lake, where his rainbow popped up the day that he died while I was driving in the downpouring rain and we scattered his ashes. If you didn't do any of that, you really shouldn't have anything to say. Because see, love should have brought your ass to Dallas. If you loved him. What was it that my nephew Devon said? Well, ain't nobody got no money to be flying down to Dallas. That's a lot of money, you know. We ain't got it like that. You ain't have it like that. Well, guess what? Look at what having it. Look at look at how you had it. Look at how you had it. Got real killers coming up, shooting people in front of my baby. Love should have brought your ass to Dallas, where he lived and he died. All of you, all of you clout chasing whack ass hoes who I've had nothing to do with for years. You hear me now and you hear me good. If you continue to speak on my son's name, if you continue to speak on our relationship in any way, shape or form, I will eviscerate you. I will take every last one of your sins and I will hang them out of the trap. And y'all don't want that. Yeah, you don't want it. I know you. You don't want it. Do you understand what I'm saying? You don't want it with me, niggas. All you okay, roaches. Jay, Jay. All you Jay. Wallaces. No, their last name is Roach. Okay. All right, leave it alone. I'm not calling them names. Not. Move on to the next question, please. All next right. question. Okay. I, I know she loved her son. I can hear the conviction within her voice. I just want to know: Is there any truth to the validity and the fact that um? Jamie and Jasmine, and I don't know if Lachelle's in on it too, but they keep saying that Gerald had uh, threatened to shoot them in the head. Did he ever threaten them? 
No, he ain't threatening to shoot to them in the hood. Though. They're liars. Okay. He did no, threaten to whoop their ass if no, they no, came no. to Texas on some craziness, no, though. He did no, do that. No, uh, Jag, I, I, I have to say, I've interviewed your husband. He did say that was true. He said it. No, I was standing there. there. It was, no, listen to me. me. No, me. no. And, and once again, I don't true. understand why you believe anything that my husband ever said. He barely He's... remembers half of what he does five minutes after he does it. Okay. Like I was saying, it was Mother's Day. No, it wasn't Mother's Day. It was Easter. Shelly called. We were at Red Lobster, me, Mommy, and Gerald. We were talking. And I said to her, I thought you were coming to visit mom for Easter. We're out of dinner right now. We don't have time to talk. Well, I'm just saying, and I don't got money to come. To, and she started getting the attitude. And I'm like, you need to calm down. We're at dinner. I'm not doing this with you. Mom's disappointed that you didn't make it. But we're at dinner. We'll call you after we eat. She keeps yelling, barking, acting crazy. Jill took the phone from me and said, listen here, bitch, you ain't going to be talking to my wife like that. I don't give a fuck who you are. I'll hey, come down there in Texas this. and I'll do this, he said, and you come down here and watch you end up food. He said, come down here to Dallas. He never said he was going to shoot her. And if my husband told you that, he must have been high. Must have been high. He say all, all right, kind of I, dumb I, shit when he high. Listen, your, your husband was not high when he told me that on this platform. I'm My husband's right always now. high, Denot. And I'm going to tell you this right now, Denot. I watched a good share of the content as much as I could stomach with you and my husband. And I'm telling you right now, he was high every time you talked to him. I know my husband. Okay, so Jack, do you know who I am in regards to your husband? Because I don't know. No, I really I mean, don't. There were times he wasn't high when we were on the phone. And he did there admit were times? that he said that. I said there were times he was not high when we were on the phone. When we were, when he I, was I hear what you're saying, but honey, you don't know my husband. You're a YouTube girl. I'm actually not. I'm a corporate girl. Yeah, you are. You're a YouTube girl. I'm gonna tell you this Why right you now. Whatever showed up, whatever showed up after my husband left <laughs> in late February, ain't nothing but some YouTube whack ass shit. The not am I a YouTube girl? I mean, you you on, on YouTube, YouTube right now, ain't you? No, I'm on you on a panelist as a commentator. I mean, but like, I'm not a YouTube girl. If I were a YouTube That's girl, that's funny because I keep hearing YouTubers my talking identity, about you. I had about 15 I, different I, people. I, I, tell I, me I would that be you known. One of the girls that was I, with I, my I husband. Would be known. One, one second, one second. No, no, no. Hold on one second. Both of you. They don't know anything. This is. I know the tea. I know tea that y'all don't know. And I've never put esoteric out there like the esoteric just did that herself i never went into that so anybody i know that's about, fine you might not have done it but other people did it which meant somebody was guessing. running their mouth to somebody nobody was running their mouth to nobody because i'm the only person who know esoteric outside of youtube that's funny because like the, the first time i heard it i didn't hear it from you you heard them guessing and we never we never confirmed it or denied it they be get playing guessing games that's all well whatever so, um, and she don't fuck with Goomba like that. Goomba, she found out all of this other stuff. And we're going to segue. Hey, E, how you, e, there's E, Jack. Why, you remember E? Hey, Jackie. <laughs> Who just called me Jackie? Hey, I, you remember hey, Jackie. E? I I'm going to tell you this right now. If you come up here acting cute, don't be mad. Don't be mad when you get the response that you don't want. Don't be cute. Well, I, I, call, I, you address I, me properly. You hear me? Yeah, and you don't call me Jackie. Me. People that actually know me in my life for all of my life call me Jackie. You don't know me. Don't Mind your mouth. Be don't I be cute. You. I want to respect you in this moment. What would you like me to You want to respect me in this yeah, moment? You'll right. respect me in all moments. Yeah, Jack, right. I don't know who yeah, you yeah. think you are. Get your get your get yourself together. Be an Jack, adult. Don't be cheap. But Jag, you overreacting. Let her let her ask No, I'm question. not. People that I don't know don't call me Jackie. Period. Okay, you can just call a Jaguar. What's up, E? How are you? Fuck out of here. 
Hi. So I was I I'm late to the party. Hi to I think I know who this is. This the girl from King Payne's channel that I ran down yes. on who don't know what to do with her mouth. Well, well Jack, Jack yeah. Art, everybody's everybody should be afforded a second chance. And right now, please just live in the moment. Like you know, she called me like, Jack. She came up here calling me Jackie. Clearly, you Jackie. want the smoke. I'm letting you know. Keep on playing. I will. I will make you cry today. Well, Jaguar, it's okay. It's okay. Go eat. Ask I will make you cry today, girl. Well, Jack, call your mama, Jackie. Her you don't know me. Sorry. But you just said I knew you from King Payne's panel. So yeah, I remember know. seeing you and I eviscerated your ass there. Don't come here for um an encore uh, performance. Don't do that. Well, I'm just saying we're familiar. So I thought I No, we're not Jackie. familiar. Not familiar enough for you to call me okay. Jackie. King well, Payne don't call me Jackie. All right, baby. Well, let's right. get it together, bitch. Right. Get it the fuck let's together. All right. Let's move forward. All right. So, collect I'm yourself. Really all right, babe. Before I collect you. All right, babe. You, you Jack, made your point. Jack, Jack, please, 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 please. Go. I'm listening. muting. I was listening to your response about Gerald and him doing the interview with Denai. I did happen to see that. And I was listening to your response to the other young lady who's on the panel. And you made the statement that... Um, Gerald was high during those interviews and you I'm assuming you alluded to that because you're saying that some of those things he said were probably not factual and you said that we don't know Gerald the way that you do so if would it be safe to say that Gerald has a a problem with um, being under the influence and speaking out on the internet would that be a fair assessment <laughs> He's a corny nigga from South Dallas, grew up in Oak Cliff. All he do is get high. Okay. If I had known my husband was a drug addict when we got married, I would not have married him. Okay. Um, I, he was I, almost 50 pounds lighter than he is now when we first got married. I thought that was his natural size. Until I forced him off the drugs. And got him living a holistic lifestyle and exercising, and then he blew up like a tick. Oh, wow! So <laughs> I, 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 I respect that because I, I appreciate you being forthcoming in that regard. Because I do think when we are with men, we are able to pick up on their habits, and and we can kind of pick read them, so to speak. And I, I think that's interesting because I remember the video. Um, of you in Dissolt. And I remember uh, a police call that I heard about the, the weed being laced with. Um, Did not. Yes. And I was I was floored by that. Uh, and I was in Texas at the time. And I just want to know do you believe that Gerald has been indulging in some of that weed laced with him? Absolutely. He smoked that shit every other goddamn day. We smoked that shit when we got back, and that's why everybody was tuned the hell up that day at the bomb shop, messing around with Bobby's special fucking weed. Okay. And what was even worse than that was when I got into Dallas Behavioral Health, there was a girl that had just been admitted the night after me, crying, screaming, losing her mind, talking about something was coming through the wall, coming to get her. Guess what she had been smoking? Fitting all lace weed. Lost her mind. Thought everybody was trying to rape her. They came and got her out the street. A cat, a stray cat rubbed up against her leg. She started stomping the cat. Said the cat was trying to rape her. <laughs> oh, you, so, but you smoked some too? Yeah, I took a hit off of that shit and I said it don't taste right. Why ain't we getting weed from my brother? My brother's getting primo from Cali. Why we smoke, smoking uh, Bobby's uh, uh, mid-grade? Hmm. Well, it didn't make no sense. Because he wasn't just getting weed. He was over there getting exos too. Oh, wow. So, I think this is it's such a... Uh, a teachable moment. I feel like a lot of people are learning things in the chat. I, Jack, I, are there any other drugs you've experimented with? Mm -hmm. Listen to me. <laughs> I am a cannabis product producer and user for pain management and for well-being. Now understand this. 
Was I 19, 20, and, and 25? Yes. Have I experimented with ecstasy when it was pure before they started putting coke and heroin in it? Absolutely. That was the 90s. Have I ever done LSD? Absolutely. I did an acid trip at a music festival in Belgium. I've lived my life. But what I haven't done is smoke no crack because I sold crack. And Whitney Houston was right. Crack is whack. But it do make a, it, it make a good dollar. I ain't never done cocaine. I ain't never done heroin. I have used mushrooms and I've done ayahuasca, which is how I was able to break completely free from my opioid addiction because I was addicted to Percocets because of all of my back surgeries and I got scoliosis. I'm not an addict. My father was my father was a drug and alcoholics counselor our whole life. Right, Jay, when you got scoliosis and did Ramirez do it? Yeah, no, know. I'm serious. I was diagnosed when I was 11 years old. I've had over eight back surgeries. Um, I have a 61 and a half degree curvature from my mid to lower lumbar. And from that, I have 16 pinched nerves. And now um, I have two slip discs from when DeSoto body slammed me and dislodged my disc, um, which I've been rehabbing myself through Bikram yoga, um, water aerobics and therapy and water Pilates. Um, yeah, that's real. Well, can I ask about, because when I saw the video of you in the airport, I was very, very, very disappointed. And I'm sure. Do you take any responsibility for The question is, is, what was you disappointed about? Well, what, well, baby? As someone. Honey, I'm a, stop. I'm a, I'm a frequent flyer. And when people act like You're that, a frequent flyer? When you when people display that, can I ask you something? Wait a minute, pause. You're a frequent fire. Well, wait, I'm gonna return it to you. No, I just know before you say what you're about to say, are you a frequent flyer? You just said yes. Okay, so when you go to the airport and you go through security and you have a carry on and you put your bag through, what usually happens? It depends. Sometimes it, it, I mean, what happens? It goes through, and if something needs to be checked, they'll pull it to the side and they'll ask me to open it okay so wait a minute they pull it to the side and then they examine it to see what needs to come out that didn't pass um, um security protocol correct absolutely they ran my bag through that motherfucker 15 times and never checked it what, what not once what was in it my belongings, my toiletries, my clothes. Yeah. But at the end of the day, they never checked my bag. And you know, the funny thing is, is people watch that video. And the one thing they did not comment about was how my bag kept being drugged through and drugged through. And nobody brought it down to the table to check it. Not once. Well, when I saw it, I didn't even think about that until you. Okay, e e wait, hold on. Get, get Ain't that a problem, e though? For a frequent flyer? Ain't that a problem? All right, e. Bye, e. Bye, e. So what was you disappointed about? The well, fact that they were no. purposefully trying to miss my flight or the fact that they were purposefully trying to keep me in Chicago where two attempts were made on my life, which is why we had to lie to people and tell them I was going to Detroit so we could sneak out of Illinois another way okay. safely. Okay. What were you disappointed in? Well, do not, can I answer that or do you want me to wait? No. No, you can answer. Excuse me. Excuse me. The not. This is not what this was about. E doing the whole interview. Okay. Let's move on. Because this is not okay. what this whole town hall meeting was for. You got questions? We got a page for that. Let's move on. Right, right. Go to the Jag and TJ's chat. I appreciate you, E, but it wasn't about that. And I do have a long list of questions that I need to get through. Yes, well, I'm disappointed in your mother for having your goofy ass. Here you go. Jag, you can't. You Baby, can't hold on, say let me drift this. Now she's going to be attempted to come back up here or say that I cited this term in favor of you. So I don't want people no. to say that or do that. Well, I mean, I wasn't even on the camera. TJ was. Well, I mean, like, all these questions are not necessary. So, like, we already talked about why this was here and why we're here. Let's move on. She can get right. it another time. Okay, moving on. Um, I, w I was going to go to Mama Francis, but let's go to Goomba, given the fact that he was mentioned. And these questions are not to trigger you, it's just to get clarification and understanding in the hopes that you can move forward in your own relationship. Because I did watch Baby, you guys. Baby, 
I did watch our live stream last night. I'm gonna tell you that. So, uh, Jaguar, uh, you married Goomba in 21 days. Um, yes. Why? Why so? Do you believe in love at first sight, or was it a codependency as to why you married him so quick? I grew to marry my husband. I, I grew to love my husband. I did not. I wasn't in love with him when we got married, but I loved what he had done for me. And he gave me a reason to live. I made it very clear in the interview that we did together and a few other times I was ready to commit suicide the night that we met. And he, he changed my mind. And I will forever be grateful to him for changing my mind. And he's the one that wanted to get married. I didn't want to get married. He was the one that needed to get married. We needed to get married. We had sex every day for 21 days, got married, and then something went wrong with his mind. So um, he he I I remember watching one of the real life interviews. He said he felt his family didn't love him. And why did you feel the need to explore his family business on YouTube? I didn't explore YouTube? his family business. He and this I discussed, kid, but he was gonna no no, no. He and I were we he and I had discussed him finally speaking out about his abuse and everything that he went through because I am an advocate. Everything that I said about his family, he knew. He used to sit in the WCW meetings with us as the virtual security guard and share stories about the things that happened to him. And the WCW women know that. And I encouraged yeah, him what? to speak out. But you brought it to YouTube and it was made into content and it got back to his family, Nicole, and all these other it people. It got back to his what? family. I told his family what I was going to do. It was no surprise. I told Charlotte I was doing it. Okay. Like, ain't nobody okay. get sideswiped with nothing. Everybody that I spoke about knew I was speaking about them. The only people that I didn't give the benefit of a heads up was the biological people that call themselves my family that you've been talking to. I didn't give them no heads up at all because I don't owe them none. But I told Charlotte, Charlotte knew. And then she told Gerald if um I kept on doing it, that he should beat me and put me in my place. Which he tried. Yeah. It was a color purple Charlotte used to tell him that all the time. Charlotte used to tell him that all the time. He would go over there around the corner to his parents' house. She would fill his head with a bunch of crap, a bunch of lies, hype him up, and then send him home. And he would come home, get high, and get drunk, and then try to abuse me at night. Like, people don't know what they're talking about. I kept all that secret. I ate all that. Because I gave my word. I made so, a vow. I promised him five years. And if in five years it was great, we'd have a wedding and move on. If not, we would move on. That so, was the agreement. My my five-year anniversary comes up January 6th of 2024. I've kept my word. So, oh, January the 6th. How your anniversary on one of the one of the most politically charged days. Yeah, I know. I know. It was our second anniversary. We had just went out to go get something to eat. We were vacationing in Tempe, like we did this year for our anniversary. And we sitting there watching the white people go crazy. And all the white people was looking at us like wondering if it was going to be like some kind of, you know, black insurrection. It was appalling. It was terrible. And that was when I was like, oh, my, my, my marriage is cursed. My marriage is cursed. We had it first. We was January 6, 2019. Insurrection came 21. Um, so do you like given the fact that like, you know, there's been allegations that, you know, even in even what you're doing on YouTube is so public, you're still allegedly doing things that are malicious more malicious behind the scenes, such as contacting sham. Uh, Sam's job trying to get him fired um, Oh that's not malicious then, That's not malicious that's, that's called malicious. business that's Back in no, listen to not. me Back in 2021 Back in 2021 Ralph Lauren encouraged Samuel Odom to put to, to sue me and put a verbal Restraining order on me for one Year I was not allowed to mention Sam Or Polo Ralph Lauren I honored that 
And then he started creeping back online. He was also told by his motherfucking job that they didn't want him involved in this gossip column shit. It not, was a bad look for him as an executive. And he's not. And like, I, yes, he is. Jack, he was just on AT2 channel. Okay, Jack, here's, here's what I want to say. He was just um, on AT2 it, channel. Jack, this is what I want to say to everybody, everybody, including you. That affirmative action uh, has been overturned. Can you please not try to harm black men? I don't give a fuck what happens to that boy. Okay, so, I don't give a fuck um, what happens to that boy. I spent eight months in jail fighting a bullshit case that he put on me that my sister encouraged. I don't owe him nothing. Daddy Ralph right. Lipschitz told you to keep your ass off of YouTube. And so I sent Daddy Ralph Lauren an email of you on YouTube. And my stupid ass sister was decent enough to confirm it in that recording that I played on night and day. Confirming it was you, Samuel Douglas Odom. Stop talking about my son. Stop talking about my son. You two were not his funeral. You two never adopted him because you didn't want financial responsibility for him. So do yourself a favor. Go suck it. Well, go suck you, it. Did you talk to Sam Jr.? Because I'm hearing that you don't even talk to Sam Jr. That's not it's true. Sam. That's not true. Hold on a second. I'll let TJ answer that. Yeah, baby. I don't want to talk about Sam. Next question. Okay, we All don't right, want to talk about Sam. Let's it's not true, but it ain't no bad business. Nah, you saying all that? Yeah, you know how TJ okay. feel about the kids. Respectfully, respect. So, um, let me move forward. And um, in, in the context of Goomba, that's why I asked about Sam <laughs> Senior. First of all, are you from a family that believes in uh, keeping secrets and believe don't believe in divorce? Like you know how like back in Absolutely. the days. Absolutely. Okay. Is that why you have a stronghold over men that you aren't like Goomba and men that you was married to before? You don't. Believe I don't have no stronghold over these niggas. I don't. Yes, you do. You do have a stronghold. No, I don't. I ain't got no stronghold. My husband ran away from home the end of February this year. He gone. I divorced. I divorced Odom in 2011. He should have been gone. Like for real. I've been engaged three times. And married once. Since then, he should he shouldn't even remember my name. So there's been saying let God and let uh let it go to <clears throat> God. Why are you still adamant about having Goomba arrested if you because he needs to he needs to face his crimes? He needs to face his crimes. He's an adult. He's a grown ass man, and grown ass people have to take responsibility for their actions. Period. He got away with enough. I done covered up enough for him. If I told everybody everything he did while we was married, he'd have been in jail. Shit. But you ain't gonna make me no victim. Promise you that. All right. You got I helped him get I helped him I helped him get away with so much shit. Covering up his fucking woo. Next question. Esoteric, are you there? Yeah. I was just chill. I had some questions. I don't want to trigger anybody. I mean, we're asking the real questions here. We're not we're not doing all of that stuff, you know. Okay. But the first so thing were... you have to do is bounce. I don't care. We're they... asking real questions. Okay, there were some questions posed in the chat. People wanted to know. Um so I don't know about this. I wasn't there, but Jack, did you sing at um Lachelle and her husband's wedding? Yes, I did. I was forced to by my family. Okay, because there was um some talk about you singing, and I think even yeah, I was Damien forced Jack to. Did. I had to be in there, and I had to be in the pictures, and I had to do all of that shit. And when we got to the uh over there to the ballroom in West Berlin off Route Thirty. For the uh, reception, I jumped over the bar. I grabbed a bottle of what? Kind, what was it? Was it E and J? I, I must have took about, chugged about five ounces, threw the bottle at the wall, uh, walked out the door, went to the payphone, called my nigga, tweeting, and um, I didn't come home for about four months. Okay, and and who made you? Your mom? My mother and my sister. My father didn't believe. He didn't know. See. 
They lied to my dad and told my dad that if I came to him, I made it all up. I was not allowed to go to the police. I was not allowed to go to the hospital. And that's why I had to go to the CDC um, down South Philly. I think it's like Broad and Reed Street. And that's where I was treated for STD and pregnancy. So let me ask you a, a deeper question because I my cousin King, fact, my brother, my god brother, my cousin King took me. Um, baby, where's the light? Uh, Jack, I did hear you speak about this particular situation on Real Life Street Stars when you told yeah. when you you said that you got in the car and you told Lachelle and your mother about what allegedly happened. No, to I told my mother first mm -hmm. after yeah, I did. ran home. Running away from that uh, insane crackhead rapist. I'm sorry, R word. So R -word when, when, when Michelle and your mom did not believe you, you still sung at the Oh, wedding. no, they never did said they didn't believe me. They told me to shut up about it. Did that affect your relationship with your mom and Michelle indefinitely? No, because it was the same. It was the same. Okay. That's um, who they are. Mm-hmm. So here's the thing. Um, I did, in fact, get some text messages and have conversations. And I just didn't think my mama would want my, do my her daughter to marry a rapist, you know? So but I, I'm here. Can I have an ashtray, baby? Like, where is it? I can't find I ain't got it. I got you. All right. Hello? I'm here, yeah, yeah. I'm hearing that um, your mother favored you over Lachelle. No, she didn't. That's what I'm hearing from everybody. No, she family. didn't. Like, yeah. No, she did not. I just worked harder. I was more obedient, and I was of a greater resource than Shelly. Shelly was a fuck up. I was. I was a hard, hard worker. But my mom started buying that, money for me when I was eleven years old. But you said that you ran away from home quite a bit. So what? what yeah, I did. Was, how was you obedient running away from home as a minor? Got your family worried about you out there in the streets. What do you That's mean? How I am I being obedient running away? What is me running away from home got to do with me being obedient when I'm in the house? Yeah, but you're a child and you are running away from being obedient in the house. Yeah, because I was getting sick and tired of being fucking bullied and abused. I took a break. By, by who? By Shelly. When I would get blamed for things with my mom and Shelly would fuck up around the house and lie to my dad and tell him that I did it. They already knew what my dad, my dad was corporal punishment, period. And whoever so, got to him first, whoever got to him first with a credible story, that's the story he went with. And whoever fucked up, like perfect example, I'll tell you a story. When my sister told tell you got married. My dad was building a patio in the backyard um, to come down off the deck, and I was his helper. So he ordered a bunch of dirt, and we had to take all of the dirt out of the driveway because they dumped the dirt in the driveway, and we had to move it all the way around in the back, level it off, and get ready to lay down the patio stone. Um, and I did all of that work with my dad. Shelly's job was to sweep off the driveway and to sweep off the residue dirt. Well, dad told Shelly to do it, left that morning. Me and Shelly was in the house. She was in the room downstairs. I was still upstairs. I was about 10. Yeah, I was 10 years old. That makes her 19. So, anywho, then, I'm looking at Shelly. The hours is going by. She on the phone talking to either Shirley or Joanne or um, that other goofy bitch. And um, talking on the phone, listening to music. You know, sneaking in the garage, smoking cigarettes. And I'm like, Shelly, you know daddy's coming home. You got to sweep the driveway. He told you you got to sweep the driveway. I ain't doing that shit. I ain't doing nothing. And I don't care what he did. And if he put his hands on me, I'm calling the cops. <laughs> I'm like, daddy's going to fuck you up. I ain't doing it. So here I am trying to be a good Samaritan. It was like 3.30 in the afternoon. My dad had been going since like 9, 10. I knew he was going to be pulled up in the driveway soon. I knew he was going to go ballistic. And I'm like, shit, he probably going to be home in the next hour. So I got out there and I started sweeping. And I'm sweeping and I'm sweeping. And I was, I was making headway, but I knew I wasn't moving fast enough because I knew he was going to be pulling up at any minute. 
So I went and got the hose and rinsed all the dirt off the driveway. All right, boom. Fuck Shelly. Driveway's clean. Dad's going to be pleased. I'm laying upstairs in the bed. This is the Power 99. I was doing some sketching. I'm thinking, hey, I done saved the day. Next thing you know, dad come through the door. Boom, boom, boom. And then I heard him run straight downstairs to Shelly's room. And then the next thing I hear, no, no, Jackie did it. Jackie did it. My dad ran clean upstairs. Didn't say shit. Took his belt off. Wrapped it around his hand and beat the fuck out of me with that buckle. And told me, you were supposed to let Shelly do it. Mind your business. With a buckle or a belt? No, with the buckle. He wrapped that leather around his and boom, my dad wasn't no fucking joke. But this, but but you just said it, it wasn't about who did it. It was more so about getting it done. And you and if Shelly was supposed to do it and said she wasn't doing it, and then you did it, why would your dad beat you for doing what was because to be done, right? when I rinsed off the driveway, the dirt went all the way down the side and the crease of the sidewalk in the street, and he didn't want to get fined by the HOA for it. Gotcha. But if Shelly had got her lazy motherfucking ass up and just done what the fuck she was told, none of that would have happened. I tried to intervene at the last minute, but I still caught the ass whooping. And after that, I'm like, fuck her. You catch your so, own ass whooping next time. That's my that's my so, relationship with my sister. Yeah, let me let me ask you this. You always have you've consistently tried to other your sister because y'all share the same mother but not the same father. And from what I'm hearing from you, like not directly, and from Michelle and everybody, your father never differentiated between you as his biological child and and, and Lachelle as his... So my father you know, treated her like she was his own. Listen to me. My dad was so a great was, man. He tried to adopt my... Listen to me. He tried to adopt Lachelle when she was seven, eight years old before I was born. He continued to offer to adopt her. She refused. She was child. waiting for her real daddy to come back. That's why she didn't get adopted until she was 17. Because she finally said, Dad, will you adopt me? And he adopted her. He would have been done it. She didn't want to say no. That's some Steve Harvey problems. Niggas just be like, oh, you with my mom. It's either you're going to be my stepdad, you like me or no. But y'all actually talking about going through the process of adopting. Chad, you come from a well-to-do black family. Why is you like this and everybody else? Seems to be a bit more level headed. Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. These niggas act just like me. I just don't hide it. <laughs> I'm not ashamed of who I am. So let me ask you this given the fact that it seems like you. Maybe that's why I made it and they went nowhere. You should try authenticity, it might help you. It seemed like y'all didn't have a problem with resources or anything. I spoke to Michelle, what was it, two, three days ago, and we had a conversation, and, and I bought Yeah, she never had a like, problem with resources. She was always giving because she was the fuck up. I had to work for everything. My parents gave Shelly two, three cars. The first car, the first two cars I got off my dad, I paid for, and I paid for my own car insurance. Shelly never paid for no cars. I did the escort that was my brother's and then uh, the Cutlass Supreme, the 79. I bought both of those cards from my dad. This is why I get upset with these niggas talking about I'm the golden child. Like they keep telling the story about how I had um, a portable um, color television, you know, the, the portable joints. You know what I'm saying? It costs like $95. Let's be talking back what? 1988, 1989. It cost about like almost $100, like $90 something. The part of the story that they don't tell was that I had a working logbook with my dad. I asked him for it. I told him I wanted it for Christmas. He said, okay, you work with me doing the buildings. I'll keep a log and I'll buy it for you when you earn the money. And that's how I got the portable television for Christmas. I actually worked for my own Christmas gift. 
That was the relationship I had with my father. My father taught me hustle. He taught me ethic. Shelly was a fucking idiot that couldn't do shit. It wasn't me. It's not my fault. I'm better than you. I worked at it. Your fucking lazy ass running around on the phone, running up $300 phone bills, eating all the food in the house, sneaking out the house all the time, stealing all dad's chains so you can hang out at the motherfucking skating ring. Like, get the fuck out of here. You know who you are. But and you Jay, know who I am. But Jay, here's the I thing. Worked, she, she... Listen to me. I worked for everything my parents ever gave me. And I gave my parents more money than they ever spent raising me i started earning my own money when i was 10 years old babysitting had four clients is this why you feel I also, I all, wait a minute wait a minute i also hustled covered um covered photo albums with with the music in them i learned how to make those i would sell those at the hair shop i also sang in jazz quartets during the summer like i always worked this is what I don't understand. People that know me ask, notice about me. Let me let me ask you a question. You yeah. Say you always, Lachelle is more lighter than you, and you're darker than her. Did colorism play a role in all of this? In the Lachelle ain't lighter than me. Lachelle Lachelle has always been darker than me. You should ask her to show your baby pictures. She came out looking like a chocolate M and M. I was the I was the white baby. <laughs> Oh my God. Shelly, I'm the sorry. only reason Shelly's skin look as light as a look in them pictures is because of filters and foundation. Shelly is dark skin. I'm the lighter one. See what I'm saying? Oh. Everything, it, it's like you didn't everything. Tell me that. That, was, that was a big question. That was an impromptu question. That didn't okay, say no, that. I'm, just, I'm just saying it's like everything they try to say about me is the exact opposite of what's real. I don't get it. What the color have you I don't know, babe. I answered. Okay. So, um, and like I said, I spoke to, and, and we're going to move on after this. I spoke to Michelle, and it seems like, and this is coming from me to you, and I don't think it's necessarily an answer. It's just something to reflect on. And it's mm -hmm. a big issue in the black community. We don't get mental, we don't get therapy. We don't talk about or deal. It's like, and I Shelly had Michelle, therapy. Like, By the way, that's a lie. Shelly did go to therapy. My dad had my dad took her to see two psychologists before the age of 18. She had a child psychologist to deal with the trauma of being essayed by Uncle Candyman. And then she went to go see Dr. Collins, who was one of my dad's sponsees from the AA program, who also um did an evaluation on her. Shelly's evaluation before 18 was that she suffered from borderline personality with schizophrenic tendencies. So, no, how could you just say the same thing about your mama and they said you lied and not? My mother sudden, is a delusional schizophrenic. She was, she was also evaluated at Dallas Behavioral Health when Shelly and Debbie took her there so that they could get power of attorney while I was in jail in Chicago. Like, they keep playing the same game, yo. They keep playing the same game. Here's the thing. I all think, all of these are facts. My uncle was a severe schizophrenic. My uncle Curtis. Right before he died, they they was ready to put him back in the mental hospital because he went to the police um um station with a whole dossier. He took a whole bunch of tweets off of Twitter from um Donald Trump and said that Donald Trump was trying to um um unalive him and was dead ass serious. My other uncle, he used to work, God rest his soul, my uncle Rob, he used to work at the um the ice cream shop and he was about to buy it the owner was going to sell it to him but they both ended up started smoking crack smoked up all the profits and then started hustling off the ice cream for crack money um that was so sad my uncle rob you know the whole family is messed up and i'll tell you where it started it started with the murder i'm sorry the unalivement of my grandmother georgia Ann. i'm not georgia Ann, anna is that the one that was tied in the chair no, no, no. That's my aunt. that's my grandmama Georgia Ann. My grandmother Ann, my mom's mother, was unalive by her baby daddy right there in the house in front of all the kids um, for my Uncle Curtis' sixth birthday. My mom was grown at the time. She's about 21, 22. She was about, it was right before she got pregnant with Shelly. 
um, when she was with Larry Lacey. So she was already at the house. Um, but she was coming back for the party. And then when she um, got off the trolley, she was by the store. So she called the house. Um, out 23rd Cambria, Strawberry Mansion. And she um asked my grandma, do you need anything from the store? She was like, mom, you don't sound good. And she said, my grandma said, I'm not, baby. He's got the gun. And that's when she heard the bang, 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 bang. And then she heard my grandma drop. And so when my mom got over there, uh, that crazy nigga was going to kill all the kids. And then the cops came. And then they put my grandma in the black bag. And, um, you know, it was bad. My mom didn't want to come home and take care of none of her siblings. So, um... They all went to go stay with my Aunt Angie, which was my grandmother's baby sister who just passed away. God bless the dead. God bless her soul. She kept them for as long as she could. And then they ended up having to go into foster care. And then that's when they was with Mom Tate and them. And that's um that was a foster mom. And they went through all kinds of stuff. They were sexually um, um they were essayed in there and they had tape worms. They were um very malnourished. I, well, was that the house before Mom Tate? What? Zach, let me ask you a question. Do you no, but do you no, let me finish. You? Let me finish. You asked, right. so let me finish. This is what happened to my mother's family. None of these people ever got therapy for witnessing their mother's unalivement. And it all happened right there in their faces. The only one that wasn't present was my Aunt Belinda. And that was because they put her in the state hospital saying that she was crazy because she kept reporting that Mac um was was essaying all of them in the house. That's the only reason my Aunt Belinda wasn't there for the murder. Otherwise, if, if they hadn't tried to make her crazy for telling the truth, she would have been there to see her mother unalive. And then um, and then she read it in the newspaper. Nobody even called her. You know, my Aunt Belinda read about, you know, her mother's demise in the newspaper. It was in the it was it made the papers. Like it was nasty. It was nasty. They never got help. They never got therapy. And these people all fell into psychosis, trauma based. And then they raised kids. Nobody should have let my mother or any of her siblings raise children. Nobody. We grew up with hollow, empty shells of people. They weren't present, they were weird. And they should have been weird to have to sit there at what was a, a happy family occasion, your baby brother's sixth birthday, and, and it ends with your mama, bang, 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 pop, pop on the floor, and it was her nigga? Like, come on. Um, Jack, here's the thing. Um, I'm going to ask you one last question, and then I am going to bring uh, Jack up because she requested it. And bring who up? And Jazz, and if that like because you said a lot, um, who did I, you say? Jasmine, your niece. Oh, huh? Okay, I'm gonna okay. go on mute and let us talk. Do you do you love your family? I just want a yes or no. There's no explanation, no long. There is no yes or no. I cannot give you a yes or no. It's 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 way too complicated to be yes or no. What I will say is is this: back in 2012, I became a landmark forum graduate. I wanted to, to unite my family. That was my goal. And I went to my sister Lachelle and said, we ain't had a great relationship, but I think this will be amazing for you. It'll be amazing for what it can do for your relationship with your daughters and your son. I think it'll be great for you. Shelly did the forum. She didn't do the seminar, but she did do the forum. And for about eight months, we was all right. She ended up moving to Florida. We ended up moving to Dallas. And after we moved to Dallas, nothing was the same. Now, I'm not going to get into the details of why nothing was the same, but it wasn't. I have made multiple efforts trying to find a way to love these very unlovable people. But after 46 years, I no Do longer interested in trying. Jaguar, do you what love you yourself? Do you of love course yourself? I love myself. I'm amazing. Jaguar's on the platform. Uh, Jack, hold on before anybody say something. I'm going to go He's on mute because I don't have nothing to say. Can I ask her a question before she goes people. on mute? 
Yeah, and be, and then Jaguar, if you if you come off a of mute, I'm gonna drop you. And if you call all these bitches, same thing with you, Jamie. I'm gonna drop y'all if y'all call each other bitches and hoes and all this other you shit. You know, Jazz or Jamie. Well, gonna yeah, do that. no, I'm not here to yell at anybody at all. Is that Lachelle or Jamie? Because y'all sound just the that's way. Lachelle. No, this is Jamie, y'all. Oh, this is Jamie. Oh. Hey, everybody. <laughs> But hey, you know, so, first, I want to say this, you know, I'm not here to yell at nobody. I'm not even here to yell at my Aunt Jackie, but I do want to say something. Ain't nothing wrong with brown skin. Black is beautiful. So we're not going to do the yeah, whole color bashing thing. We can touch on that in a second. But you sat up there and you're tarnishing Giovanni's name so. and disrespecting him yeah. as if you had a relationship with him. You can't speak on that. You was never around. You up here capping and lying for these people like uh, you was really doing something. You were never doing nothing. Let's keep it a buck on Jackie. And then you sat there and made comments about my mom's skin complexion. Like that was a chocolate M&M. &M. And last time I checked, you've always been jealous of her. Like that and was you're just with rude. a chocolate woman. Yeah, you're with a whole so chocolate woman. About? You should embrace it. Time, you should ain't nobody call you a fat Cisco. Ain't nobody doing it. That was rude. <laughs> this is this is what you came up here to talk about colorism. We're gonna talk. You about came up here because that was. You came out. up here to hey, talk hey, about hey, colorism. Hey. Let's first part. Let's hey, start. Wait, it. hold on. No, I'm mute. I'm muted all y'all. Jay, <laughs> just let let. I don't curse. Don't Somebody yell. Let's twenty fifth birthday. I guess what Jamie and Jazz. My mom didn't wish me a happy birthday. Stop lying for these people. You're a liar. And what we're not going to do, we're not going to yell at nobody. Let's all just have a conversation. Like, let's start there. And you've really been mad. You've been mad since Javani passed, and you made it seem like it was a family's fault. Is this like promo for y'all next gag reel to try to get on a reality TV show or something? Baby, Hi, Jackie. No, it's not. No. Nobody is... Nobody is thinking about that. Stop gaslighting your family, Jack Wire. I'm going to drop you. I'm going to keep muting y'all. Stop. Like, this shit is... Like, let's all stop. I got to say is, all I got to say is, in order for us to use your name to get onto a reality TV show, you would have to ring bells. No one knows you. I don't know about this little cult following that you think, you know, because they keep up with you and your messy ass life. They're watching you because you act like a crackhead. You're embarrassing mm -hmm. yourself. You're putting yourself on YouTube and exposing everything. And you're not even exposing real tea. So this is what you tea, call talking about an honest conversation. Okay, you can call my phone. No, 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 go no, ahead, Jamie. You're Jamie, liar. go ahead and you're liar. You oh, could, you Ain't no network picking. Ain't no network picking up Jamie. Jamie and Jasmine because of you. Nobody knows you. You lied before and said you got us on Bad Girls Club, baby. You were in jail when we got casted. Jamie, I know okay. you said all things to do with Bad Girls Club. I never said that. Matter of fact, I said the exact opposite. Up. I you said I wanted song. to have nothing to do with it. I said I didn't thing, want my name mentioned at all. I, I, I never you mentioned you. Choice. You can go through all my you're social media. I never mentioned that. Yeah, I think I really made. Really I might have sent out stuff. one shot out, and I said I was proud that at the way you handled um after the fight when that girl drug you by your weave down the stairs. I think that was the only thing I commented on. But I never commented <laughs> about the bad girls club at all. I, I, I don't need. Did. I don't need I to talk about y'all. But I don't need to talk know. about y'all. And so as I far know. as don't nobody know me, a half a million people Google my name every day, toots. That's I'm a fact. That's a fact. A half a million, million people Google my name every day. I have multiple videos on YouTube that have millions of views. One second, one second, one second. Jag, we don't care. I've muted everybody. We don't care about a half a million people that Google you every month, not every day. I looked at I know for a fact. No, she just said, don't nobody know me. Okay. That's not true. She's lying. It's not okay, that. Listen, well, listen. What I'm saying that nobody, soul. what I'm saying is no one knows you. Like, you gotta understand, we're in a different age bracket. You did Jay Z Unplugged a decade That's ago. funny. Was, my largest was, following right now is Gen Z on TikTok. Honey, that was my largest favorite. following is Generation Z. You know, people that are younger than you. Okay, but listen follow here. me every day. Got me a billion okay. views on TikTok. Okay, but that's, but that's listen, besides the point. Not but don't nobody know me. You sound crazy. No, Listen, we're not gonna. We're not gonna. We're not gonna. We're not, are you no, okay, child? You don't sound well. Jay, Jay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop you if you do it again, and I'm gonna drop you, uh, uh Jamie, if y'all do it again. We're not here to stroke no egos. We're here to have a conversation. This is a situation where I'm hoping that maybe, like, fuck, y'all need to hug each other. Like, I, I need to hug my family too. But like, it's enough is enough. Like, I'm not here to deal with the ego. I'm not. That's boring. It gives me a fucking Jamie headache. Jamie and Jasmine, y'all got on here. Y'all were talking correctly in the beginning. I know y'all can do it. Like, just that whole question. 
That bitch got to say something. I'm colorism and don't nobody know. Well, no. Just, she the one who brought it up. Exactly. I didn't bring up colorism. Bring up colorism. One, so she's one second. Wrong I, one second. I brought up colorism and I apologize for it. Can we move forward? Jamie, it's your turn to speak. Jag and TJ, if y'all cut them off, I'm going to drop you. That's, I'm not saying it anymore. Go ahead, Jamie. Yeah, we're not here to yell or argue. I want everybody to have a side so that everybody can talk. Like I said, we're, we're not here to spread nobody's egos, nothing like that. What I'm saying is, if you're going to get up on a panel, like, let's be truthful about it. You didn't have a relationship with Giovanni. He called me on his birthday, and he sat up there, and he damn near cried and said, my own mother didn't wish me a happy birthday. So for you to sit up there and say you made him vegan steak, Giovanni not even vegan. He don't eat pepper steak. Right, that's besides the point. You're talking about people got dragged. Last time I checked, uh, nobody got dragged. You're mad, and nobody's using your name to get on anything. You're really upset, and it's just giving miserable. You you think that you popping and you're not. You're literally on YouTube with what 300, 400 people watching your views. You're not lit. Me and my sister got way more followers than you. We got our own motion. You're mad. So just stop talking about it. Seth. That's yeah. why you're begging for my mom's mo mom's money and her number that you're never gonna get. Get a job, honey. Time's That's up. That's fucked up. Y'all so no, 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 need. No, I'm, I'm going to tell you before, and I think Jag needs to say this. And Jag, you need to be honest and transparent. Um, that's fucked up for y'all to prohibit her from being in touch with her mother. I said that to you privately, and I'm saying it publicly. Despite y'all issues and despite whatever motives you believe Jaguar is set for, that's fucked up. Don't don't prevent this woman from speaking to her mother. That's evil. And I told, and, and because you mentioned it, I'm gonna tell you here. I told you, you know, you know, I told you. So yeah, you have, you have, doesn't know the facility, Miss Francis, is that? You definitely, you definitely told us that. However, like I said, my grandma called my aunt Jackie two right. days ago, and TJ and Aunt Jackie did not pick up the phone. They didn't pick up the phone. I don't know what happened or if they were on live or something, but they did not pick up the phone. And my mom even specifically texted TJ and said, "Hey, my mom wants to speak to you guys. What's up?" Like no one said nothing. No one's. My grandma wanted to talk to her. I guess we don't have a life and we sit around waiting for your beck and call. Your mom was supposed to have sent my stuff five weeks ago. I should have talked to my mother as soon as I got out of jail. Whatever excuses you want to make, make them. Doesn't matter. I will rectify all things shortly. You done? Sweetie, sweetie, you're stuck. Are you done? You're stuck Are you done, sad. child? Y'all just sent. Y'all just Are you sent done, child? Ever? No, I'm not. You yes. don't know Stop. what Are happened. You done? I'm going to tell lying? you this. Are you done lying? Because Uncle Sam, stop, Uncle Sam was more. Uh, excuse me. Go ahead. I, I said, I'm Uncle Sam was more of a parent than you ever were. To both of them. Once sons. again, once again, you once stepping again, out of line. Worry about worry about your own father. Worry about your own father. Why aren't you more worried about your own family? You have a father. Sam is not your father, and he hasn't been your uncle legally for over a decade. You I sound know, whack. I think you were a you liar sound when whack. I was nine, baby. Now understand this. You don't know what happened on Giovanni's birthday because you weren't in Texas. I was. But it's funny. It's funny. You right? weren't I mean, in I Texas. You. I was. And we both know Giovanni over exaggerated things all the time, especially when he was high. And he was high on his birthday and the day after that. Okay, and the day yeah, after that. Want to know how right I know? Oh, because I saw right his now. top screen from his autopsy. I saw his top I'm screen. Jackie, I Jackie. know what was in my son's stomach when he passed away. You do not want to know why you weren't there. I'm Jackie, if I'm lying, you weren't there. Why don't you weren't there? One second, one second, Jamie. Jaguar, don't you hear this this child calling you Aunt Jackie? She's respecting you. Even though you didn't try to disown the mother and say they're not part of the family. This girl actually loves and respects you, and you're not accepting it. And it's causing conflict. And you're running away from that. It seems like you run away from true love. Like these people are connected to you. Through thick and thin, through death, through like this girl is respecting you, and you're sitting up here antagonizing the situation. Let's have a fucking conversation. For Winfrey, me to death. You're not listening to anything she's saying. She got on camera. She got on camera talking about colorism. I didn't bring that up. Then she starts talking about clicks and views and who's more popping on social media. Then she lies and says. Excuse me. Then she lies and talks about me and my son's relationship that she was not present for because she was not there. She I'm wasn't dead. there. I'm See, dead. people keep overlooking the fact that these very people 
who called the police. And by the way, they were so annoyed with you. The cops who investigated his unaliving were so sick of you and your sister and your mother calling there, giving all this wild information. By the way, thank you for tanking the investigation because they went and they checked all of the stuff that y'all was saying on social media and they used that to victim shame my son and no bill his unaliveness. You weren't there. I'm Jackie, stop saying we You don't there. get to you say anything no, unless listen, listen. you were there. You weren't there. You don't know what his dead body smelled like. You don't know what he, he looked like. You don't even know the expression that he died with on his face. You weren't there. Period. And guess what? And guess Take what? Neither, your simple neither. ass on. You weren't there. Zach, stop. Zach, stop. Listen, you weren't there. You, listen, you don't second, get to second, speak up. One, one second. One second, Jay, because what I'm getting is, and I and I don't and I don't, I'm treading lightly. I am. You're saying they wasn't there at the time of this, and they're saying you wasn't there his whole goddamn life. So it's some blame shifting going on. Also, and not it, true because I was there his entire life. What I did do was something that their mother didn't. I worked. I worked. I toured 312 days to 20 days a year, every year for seven years straight before Mom. I slowed my, before I Mom. slowed my touring schedule down. And before you start arguing with that, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Before you, before you start to try, before you start to try to lie, you can go back. Anybody can go and check my touring schedule from the years 2000 to 2010. All of that is recorded. All of the concert halls, all of the promoters, everything. I worked. Your mother didn't. Listen, I just want to watch your mouth, watch your mouth, child, because I paid for your life. I paid for your life from the time you were born when your dad was in jail. What did you ever and do? I me? sat there and I busted my ass and I worked extra so your mother could have food to feed you. I bought your Christmas Hi. presents. What, I what bought your you, clothes. What, what did you do? I you paid for your life. Wait, and on, he, one, one second. One, one second. Jamie, respectfully, I think what this, what she's saying, that's between your mom and her. Like, this is where you're overstepping it because you didn't have a consciousness and she's telling you something that you're questioning. You need to talk to your mom about that. Or your, your mom is quiet because she probably knows it's true to an extent of whatever it's saying. That's just my own interpretation. So um, that's your own. And I think and we I should leave everybody who's like not present to defend themselves out of the conversation. Like right. Giovanni is resting. I feel like that was to just. Yeah, that. but hold on. The, the reason why we got here is because I've had a plethora of conversations with Lachelle, Jamie, and um, and their. For all that like, was worse. Wait one second. Jamie was basically like. You know, despite whatever Jack may have said about her father, they have the pain and the root pain is because of the relationship and because of that, uh, the, the, the tragedy that happened in the family and they yeah. need to heal from that on a whole. Well, well here's the thing about that. This has happened and I'm sure Jack can corroborate it on different channels or whatever, like. Um, I know there are questions about Giovanni and it's segued into that, but I'm, I, I just feel like it, it's one of those agree to disagree things and they're not going to do that. And everybody has their own different opinion on it. I'm not a liar. He, is his, mother. he is his mother. She so gave birth to him. Is. He wouldn't have been here without her. And truth be told, those are his cousins. So they also have strong feelings. Those are his family members as well. So ladies, if y'all could just agree to disagree and buy. Maybe get on the If they love them so much, why didn't they come to Texas for his funeral? Family, I understand Since they love that, him yeah. so much, I guess he wasn't worth the airfare. Well, I'm, I'm, as far as that's funny. concerned, yeah, we, the, we, the we, understanding we, that I have so is got, that he wait, was he cremated. cremated. He was wait, cremated. He so no, that there no, wasn't no, a funeral. no. He wasn't cremated until after his service. His body remained intact for three weeks. His cremation oh. was two weeks after his ceremony. And okay. anyone who wanted to see his body could have came to Golden Gate Funeral Home right here on 35 that me and my beloved drive past all the time. Cross the street from where they unalive most three.
They could have came down here and they would have had time. I arranged it with the funeral home. They held his body there for three weeks before we burned his body. Yes, you're full of crap. You weren't there because you didn't want to be there. I guess he wasn't worth the plane fare. Instead, y'all had yeah. that whack ass party. Y'all had that whack ass party on Hawthorne Street and got that young man killed. That's where you were. You're a liar. That's where you, you were. And you don't. That's where you were. This conversation. Hey, that's Jay, Jay where Jay Jay you. That's why the whole family don't ever no, no, and did not and did not to answer your question. We're not overstepping nothing because we know the real her. Okay, you do not, and TJ, you do not, and anybody else on this platform, y'all do not. Y'all not about to tell me about my aunt Jackie. Who we, that's we fine, Jamie. If anything, my just brother. articulate yourself and, and give a, 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 it doesn't have to be an educated argument. Just give a profanity free argument without coming down on your aunt and, and air your grievances. You know, there might be some healing from this. Honestly, I pray for healing for you guys. I'm so serious because this is so sad as a family. And I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not taking anybody's side. I promise you. It's just life about, is too short. Day, life is too not, short for all of this. It's not about taking nobody's side. I just want to talk. About I would it. like a real reason on why you and weren't there. Y'all, exactly. you, call, you keep talking speak. about my son. Why weren't you there? Y'all still have her talking, and I can't talk. Is y'all gonna mute her phone or something? Because I've been letting her talk this yeah, entire time. Yeah, okay, yeah, Jack. You don't let me do her, nothing, child. Please. What are you talking about? One second. One second. Just, one second. One second. Jay, uh, Jaguar, if you come off a of mic one more time before she land, and I'm gonna give you two minutes, Jamie. I'm gonna drop you, Jay. Go ahead. Like I said, Giovanni never had a funeral. If he had a funeral, we was not aware of. And Jackie literally told us that she was cremating him. We said, "Why are you cremating him? Please fly, fly the body back to Philly, where he was raised at." All the people that he went to Overbrook with, that she's claiming he went to Easter. No, Giovanni went to Overbrook High School, and I got pictures to prove it, and I can actually send it to you. That man went to Eastern for like what a year, got into a fight, and then got transferred to Overbrook. Stop lying. The man never had a funeral. She cremated him on purpose. She never flew him back to Philly. What happened? That's not me. I don't know what happened. Uh, she probably got a call or something. Did not? Yes. While she is indisposed, she's a liar. Because guess who was at my son's funeral? His god sister, who was a real sister to him. And my, that's my god daughter. Your mother took care of your son when we were all living at 228 Centurion Drive in Jersey. Your mother was the one who was carrying the weight. You were nowhere around. When we were all eating dinner, mama made that food. So stop capping. Don't do that. Like, you sound dumb right now. Do you see this? And you can't comprehend I'm sitting here giving proof that the people knew there respect. was a funeral and all they can do is over talk me. Listen, we're we, not, were, we're we were at the week. Okay, go ahead, Jimmy. Like I said, got, we're not. Over, got, we're not. We're not. You got a minute before I bring her back up. Here. We're we're not over talking her. She's you can you can bring her up here. She's been lying on us for years. She's actually You're lucky, lucky even get a mention from us. We've been literally trying to keep it calm. This is election. embarrassing. You're embarrassing to the whole family. That's why nobody. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm the shit. Y'all no, are embarrassed. That's not as good as me. Bitch, what are you talking about? You're no, you're not. No, you're not. You're whack. You throw up on camera and leave your vomit all over the place. You didn't sell no drugs, girl. You come from a. A upper middle class family from Jersey. You no, know, I did sell drugs. No, and your mom right. knows because I used to break her down money for y'all when you was kids. Really with, and your dad ain't had no job. We did not acknowledge you for years. I broke your mom down all the time. I looked out for y'all. It, it's sad. And, and this is exactly why I want nothing to do with you. This is why I want nothing to do with you people. Y'all hate you so much. Stop talking about it. Tell her about herself. She's a liar. All she want around her is yes, man. And I'm sorry. I'm not that. I'm going to always let you know. When you wrong, you wrong. The fact that you mother. Shut up. I understand what you're trying to do. But I'm telling you right now, I will not participate in this law any longer. If you're going to leave these liars up here, um, I'm not going to stay because I'm not going to sit here and waste my time listening to lies. Well, I'm just not. Well, 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 so second, we came second, up here. I've done the best that I can. Um, but I'm about to leave because the truth is it doesn't matter if they don't bang with me. I stopped banging with all of them years ago. I, there are no social media posts you'll ever see with me and my nieces. There are no social media posts that I put up. After 2013 with my sister, there is no, there is nothing, there is no evidence of any of these people in my actual life. This is nothing but a cloud chase. 
It's nothing. You're using us for clickbait. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Um, I'm done. Um, I need to be and I am lies. traumatized. I want to buy lies. Me too. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Like, there's no, I'm, I'm never, I'm never doing this again with you and your family. I'm, so I want to buy lies. lies. This was a shit well, show. Where, hey, hey, guess what? We're going to leave. Um, My Jackie, stay up here and keep capping all you want to. Bye. And bye. Be well. Merry keep Christmas. Mouth, Happy Kwanzaa. Bye. My cousin, bye. My, aunt, my grandma. Bye. Not drop them. Bye. 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 Trying to get views. Keep everybody's name out your mouth. Oh, yeah, because Jag's not as popping as she thinks she is. And bye. You're, pop, you're not popping. That's why, that's why you got to say Diddy, Jay-Z. Not really. None of these people know you. Leave it alone. I got it. I got it. I got it. All right, so all right, cool, cool, cool. I got one more question for Jag before, because I'm I'm not like this. There's no, like, I'm thinking there's gonna be a touch by an agent moment, and it's just not. So here's the thing. Um, let me let me move forward and let me skim through this. Um, in so now, relationship. Can I yes, ask you a question? Yes, you did. did anybody yeah, give a relevant answer on why they didn't come to the funeral other than I didn't have one? Like no. I said, my goddaughter Muffin was there my son's godmother nadia was there uh my young boy flew down to stand by me because i was single at the time and he didn't think i should be alone um i flew his father in donald boykins um and everyone in the family knew Jay, Jay, they said Jay, they Jay. said no they said they weren't coming up with the plane fare, they told me that they would give me money to fly his body back to Philly. I said, considering the kind of heat he was in, I don't think it would be wise. I think there will be drama at anything we put his name on. He died in Dallas. We're going to do it here in Dallas. I'm going to have private viewings only to secure and make sure that there's no trouble. So, I, Jay, didn't know, me, me, I didn't know. I didn't know who it analyzed yeah. my son, and it was done in such a, a terrible manner. I just wanted to keep everybody safe. But there was a funeral. There was a program. It was done at Dallas City Temple, and uh, the pastor that officiated my son's uh, ceremony is Dr. Jamie Callisar. So let me ask you a question. So Jay. everybody knew, okay. and it's just it's pathetic. My mom was Jay, there, I it, was there. Is it safe to say that you are hurt because they didn't pull up to the funeral? Oh, I was I mean, devastated. I, I was devastated. devastated. And this Especially is considering that they spent all that time giving all that bad information to the detective, slowing down my son's investigation, talking about they were social media detectives and they knew who, 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 who unalived my child. Police lost almost a week from their nosy asses. You, you could get on the phone and, and keep calling Arlington police, but you, you couldn't get on a plane. Of course, I was devastated, but we carried on, which is what made it so terrible while we're sitting there at Gloria's in Bishop Arts. And in the middle of the meal, we're talking about my son. We're talking about Giovanni and we're telling stories and, you know, crying and laughing. And then I get the phone call from my son. Mom, they killed him. They killed him. I'm like, what do you mean? They killed who? I'm like, your brother's been dead a week. He said, no, they killed his friend. I'm like, what do you mean they killed his friend? He was like, they shot him right in my face. So people need to really understand what that moment was like for me. I'm laying my firstborn to rest. And, and my baby is calling me, telling me he just witnessed his best friend get murdered in his face. Jaguar, he would have avoided all that if he had been at his brother's funeral. But his father wouldn't send him because he was afraid that I was going to get a reversal of custody. And he wanted to keep coming after me for child support. All of this is egregious. Let me ask they you are a question, liars. Jag. They are clout chasers. And I am done. When my son but, died, uh, you, my, you listen to me, when my son that. died, my connection to those people ended. That's it. There is no turning back. Can I forgive them? Yes, I can forgive them. Do I want any dealings with them? No, I do not. Ever. That door is closed. So, Should have been there. Um, so Jack, Jack, what I'm what I'm hearing in, in about certain things and different is it like on the on the contrary, people some people might think that you're using that 
pain and trauma, which is very valid and very real for you and for a lot of people, you're using that as a moment to deflect the neglect that you had towards him when he was actually here. I never neglected my son. I never neglected my son. My son had the best of everything. I worked my ass off so he could. I made every sacrifice for my son. You should actually talk to people that actually cared about and loved my son. These people, I don't understand what it's going to take to get you to get it. They are born liars. They will lie about anything. They will lie about everything. I watch them do it to each other. You know, it's funny. They talk about my relationship with Giovanni, but they don't ever talk about Lachelle's relationship with Devon, their brother, their actual brother. No, they just run around calling well, Giovanni I'm not, their I'm brother. Not, I'm interested in hearing it. I'm not, I'm no, not no, no, in- no. Listen to me. Listen, I want you to understand my logic before you cut me off. They don't ever talk about their brother, Devon. That's their brother. Their mother gave birth to him. I gave birth to Giovanni. I am not your mother. He was not your brother. He was your cousin. Stop living in delusions. You want to talk about a brother? Talk about yours. You probably don't because he calls all of you whores and has been doing so for the past 15 years. Okay. You know, all of the stuff that you, all of the stuff that Jamie Jasmine and Dominique have done in Florida that Devon has told me about. You girls should stop talking at all. You have a brother. Talk about him. I'm not your mother. Wouldn't want to be. Bye bye. I am done with you. I told every last one of them in 2018. I was done with them. My ex-husband was upset because I let my son's biological father come to the funeral and not him. You weren't his dad. You never adopted him. That man is his blood. They were mad. Big mad. Oh, well. Now they want to get online and use my name to rewrite history because they're mad that I don't want to have anything to do with them and don't talk about them. Go find another way to become, go find another way to become famous. Get off my name. Period. Okay. Genesis, she got off. Could there ever be any type of resolution between you guys? Do you ever see y'all getting past this? Even if y'all will never be friends again, she Who? just it, Genesis just wants to know. I don't. Uh, I ain't got no use for um Peter Griffin. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's what you call her. Yeah. That woman is a black that's hole. Like, okay, so I didn't even mention it. I didn't bring it up. It, it's like I don't. It's, it's okay. It's okay. Um, moving forward, let me get to this. Let me breeze through this. So the whole world saw uh, an Instagram video um, where you was in the bathroom and your mother came in and you scared the hell out said, of me. Well, you said one second. You specifically said, and I seen this, so ain't nobody tell me this. Um, you said that if she wasn't your mother, you would have been done with her, whatever the case may be. Um, yeah. Why are you so- because she always busts into the bathroom when I'm ass naked. I mean, that's your mother. She like, you know, like she's gone. Good. Okay. So, oh, she birthed you. Wow. You tried. Your heart was in the right place. I mean, here's the thing. Like, people are talking about it, spinning lies. I ask clarifying questions. So the questions that I ask were the questions that she would more than likely not answer. And, you know, I had to find a balance between allowing her to freedom of speech and answering questions and allowing her family to step up here. So I think, like, this is it. Like, you know, y'all stream my content. You get a copyright strike if I don't like you. Um, if you scream Jaguars content over on Jag and TJ, you're getting a copyright strike. Um, and we don't give a fuck about no fair use clause. You're going to be down for two weeks. Okay. So that's just what it is. And moving on. What's up, E? You have anything to say? 
Yes, she said everything about that funeral, except that she gave them an invite. I didn't hear her say one time she gave them an invite. She said that it was a private uh, thing. She said that certain people were excluded. She intentionally said that. And I just really feel like it's some truth in what these nieces are saying. Everybody in her family is not lying on her. I, I just, no, I don't. And I also believe while she was touring these 300 cities, that that baby was with someone else. You're not saying that you intentionally. But wait, but wait, but wait, 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 wait. She's she's a musician. She's torn. She cannot take care of the child. Okay, like let's right. let's be real. Like, no, no, I'm in agreement with that. But when Beyonce says, and Jay Z taking on, you know, like come on. No, but when somebody says that the baby was with somebody else and they were raising them, it's nothing wrong with saying, well, yes, I was working, I was providing. The the father was not contributing financially. But to just flat out and say people are lying, people who were there and they saw it, I think that is wrong. DJ and Jack is calling me. Child, I can't. Hello? You got What'd you say? Yeah, yeah, we, we good. I, well, hold on. Well, I was going to, um, we good. I just had one other question. We can do it another time. I'm, I'm overwhelmed, Jay. Huh? Okay. Can y'all, can y'all hear this? Can y'all hear? Say something, Jay. Hello, hello. Can y'all hear that? She's low, but we can hear it. Um, you're, you're low. You want to come back in because it's very low. Okay, I send you the link right now. Yeah. Um, y'all, y'all check out Jag and TJ channel. I'm a um, I'm a pin their channel, their 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 Discord and stuff. Um, I'm gonna do that when um we end this live stream. What's up, Genesis? Uh, Jag is coming back. Shout out. We don't want another shit show, girl. She don't want to talk to you. She gonna straight up disrespect you. You see, I should did her family. So what make you think you? Would, you know? <laughs> I just, I just want to talk before she gets on here because there was like a whole thing on this thing called coffee and then that got like broadcasted like for like hours upon hours and we rewinded and brought back up again where she's calling me a black hole and this, that, the other. And the thing is, is that like <laughs> at the end of the day, like if she don't have anything against Legina, you know what I'm saying? I don't understand why she would... You know what I'm saying? Like, is Regina still a thing? Like, is people still talking about Regina? Well, well, it is because she sat there on coffee and for like almost like hours just began playing. Is Regina around? Because I I talk to you every day and I don't ask about no motherfucking Regina. Is Regina oh, there? What, what ended up happening is that like, but uh. I, I, uh, okay, Jag is back here, girl. Jag is here, girl. You know you can go ahead and say what you say. So, bottom line is, I just I, to call me all these names or whatever, and then I'm not supposed to ever defend myself. You know, I don't understand why. Jag, please let her talk. I muted you, Jag. Go ahead, please say what you need to say, Genesis. Um, Genesis, please. At the end of the day, like when it came down to that situation, I did not force Legina to do anything. I did not do anything that was nefarious, but I wanted my name off of it. So, and I have every right to, and so I didn't. Right, because, like, girl, you disrespecting people. Of course, people going to get their motherfucking lit back. You this big personality on YouTube, Jack, and you got all of this power and prelates and Genesis is just don't have a platform. She got your, she got a lick back by taking her name off and it's fucked up. But guess what, Jack? You're here. You're alive. You're free. And I, I speak to Genesis. Genesis just feels hurt by the way y'all relationship unfolded. And what relationship? It started off good. It started off great. What relationship? What relationship? Okay. She really came she came into my life to use me for my contacts and then to sit there and try to find a way to build up her platform off my name. That's not a friendship or a relationship. That is an opportunist taking advantage of an opportunity that was granted them by someone who hadn't seen them in damn near, actually over 20 years. Okay, there I is no relationship. There is no relationship. You excuse me, you spoke, now I'm speaking. Okay, and, and after you're done, Genesis is gonna speak, and we're gonna move. That's forward. fine. So, and, and, I don't have a problem Genesis with that. 
And once Genesis leave this platform, before I ask you my final question, don't mention them, please don't. I don't, I don't, want don't to mention who? Once y'all go talk, Peter Griffin, like, you can leave, let, let Peter Griffin go. You know what I'm saying? She didn't give him that. I'm sorry. I'm not the one that came up with that moniker, but it seems to fit. And you liked it so much, you actually made it your profile picture. So I don't see why you're upset. Touch. You seem to be enjoying it. You put it up as your icon. You must like it. I'm a natural comedian. Listen, I, I, I find it very. You know what I? You know what I find most interesting that you sat here, panel after panel, complaining about my friend Sean Davy Way bullying you, and then you turn around and try to collaborate with him after you try to make a monster out of him. I think that's just downright weird. There's, there's actually, I never actually tried to collaborate. Yeah, you did. I seen, I, I seen the messages. Me you need that. to stop playing. Sean Davyway and I are actually friends. Something that me and you girl. are not. Girl, we don't give a fuck about Sean Davyway right now. We care. I'm about sorry, what? but that's no. But she talking about Peter Griffith. It didn't come from me. It came from him, and she embraced it. So I don't understand why you got a problem with it. And you can be a born comedian all you want. I got a joke for you. FBI. You know, Elysio got that Rico case. And anybody that's attached girl, to any of that business girl. is going to be questioned and looked at. So good luck to you. Good luck hey, to stop gaslighting people. Like, I'm not gaslighting anything. That's a fact. That's a fact. See, see, Monica Lockett, since you don't want anyone calling you Peter Griffith, Monica Lockett is very, very, very involved in that carbonation mess. And I'm telling you right now, you got yours, you got your turn. Now I'm gonna get mine. I have no need to talk right. about you. I have no need to say your name. Matter of fact, do yourself a favor, Toots. Forget mine. Will. Be well. Will. Okay. Like, come on now. What this be be well. Uh, okay. But I'm going to still speak my Be piece. well. Be well. Be well, honey. Be well. Ain't that what your Baba Lau been trying to get you to do for a long time? You ran around wearing white for three, four months talking about trying to lighten your soul just to turn around and mess with my bond? That don't sound like you lightened up at all. It sound like you got real dark. Get used to the darkness. Honey, you call get used to the darkness because okay. darkness is coming, baby. I'm not fixing the darkness is coming. Be well, be well, well honey. Doc, I'm not gonna be speak darkness well. on you. I speak be well, be love and light. Well, okay, no, okay. Is one second, Genesis. Ask whatever, then we're gonna move on. Like, let's say what you need to say. Here's the thing How many times have you seen me get on my platform, Genesis, and say, I, These tears? Or me apologizing and me taking accountability is for me, not the other person. You can't control right. it, Jack. I'm right. So what did you for myself and what I did? Okay. She could be mad all she wants, but bottom line, I did what I did, and I did it when I had a very sound reason for doing what I did. And I don't care whether you feel whatever about it. I don't give a fuck. Bottom line is, is that you're calling me up, you're threatening my children or whatever. I'm not fixing to sit back and let you do that. You know what I'm saying? Period. Threatening. Talking about my, I wish death on you. What, ch you what children did I threaten? What children did I threaten? You threatened my children, everybody up in this house. When? So anybody when did I threaten your kids? When you called me that morning at 11 a.m. Threatening to uh -huh. uh, the CPS is fixing to come over my house and this, that, that. No, that's not what I said, Monica. I did not say that. What I said was, is that I forwarded Azim two or three emails that was sent to me by people, not me. I forwarded the emails of what they said. And I told Azim and Shaka to tell you to lock it up because people were branding you a groomer and they said you were grooming the children. That's what it said in the emails. Maybe you should go to Azim. She live in your house. Ask her to show you the emails that came from my email account, jaguarwright at gmail.com. As you will see, they were forwarded, meaning that they did not come from me. You're a lying ass piece of shit, toots. Well, I never threatened anybody. I sent you what people were sending me who warn you to warn 
you, you are a liar. And as soon as I get those emails, when I open my accounts back up after my hearing, I will be publishing the emails that I that were sent to me and I will publish the email that I sent to Azim. Stop lying on me, Tuts. Never sent the emails to me. Yes, I Never sent the emails to Azim. She live in your house. Go ask her. Go ask her. So why would you're a liar? You're a liar, Peter Griffin. I never threatened your kids. But it's nice to know that you would double down on a lie that was spread around about me all over the internet that you've been consuming day after day, panel after panel. Once again, as soon as I get in my email, I will publish the email that I sent to Azim, who lives in your house. I got that email. You're talking about Shaka's wife. Shaka, you know, Shaka's wife texted me and asked me to get in touch with you, and I was wondering why. Matter of fact, yes. Let me, let me. Um, you know that, right? Like, what's uh, 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 is it? Ivim or uh, uh, Xim? Ivim. Ivim. I don't know. Her. I know Shaka's wife with a different that's name. That's no, that's Shaka's wife. That's Ivim. Yeah, this is her Azim. Let me let me see what she's like. Why is she in the middle of this? And then on top of she's that, not in the middle of anything. I sent her the emails because the hey, emails in the emails it said that Genesis was grooming her children. I sent them to her as a warning. Had a long conversation with her about it. I never threatened nobody, kids. You a liar, Toots. And then you went on panels saying that you're a liar, Toots. You went on panels saying I was grooming. You're a liar, you Toots. Went, Toots. You went on King Payne. You're a liar. You're a liar. You're I'm a liar. I'm I'm I not never not threatened not. your kids. Or Shaka and Azim's children, who I love dearly and I miss them so much. I do. But I never threatened those kids. You're a liar. And as soon as I open up my email, I will publish the emails that also, I forwarded to Azim. Also open up the King Payne panel where you actually said that I was actually grooming those kids on King Payne. I didn't say you were so grooming them. I said that that's yeah. what the email said. I no, said that no, what the email you're no, a liar, Toots. No, when you no, got the COVID no, and was in the hospital, no, did you suffer from some kind of brain damage? Because you don't seem to be understanding the facts. There are emails. I will publish them. I am done. Be well. Listen. You got your lick? I'ma get mine. Period. You grown? Stand on it. Pause. So, Keep Jack, that same just, energy you had online while I was in jail. Keep that same energy. You got your turn. Now it's mine. Be okay. well. It is the same you know, Jack, one, one second, one second, one second. Jack, what it is, it seems like you know the, the power that you have on YouTube when you 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 say stuff and these you feel like these people aren't supposed to say something back. And like, I didn't know, say she wasn't supposed to say something back. I've only asked that people be accurate. I have never threatened to call CPS on those children. Oh, I, I, seen an email. Them. I, seen, I seen an email from your email address where it was something like that. I remember it. I, seen it I sent it to Azim to show her what people were sending me and I told Azim to tell Monica Lockett to lock it up because she was pissing people off I literally just got, one second one second Genesis one second I literally just got off the phone when I went on mute and y'all seen me talking I literally was talking to Shaka's wife she said she's not on type she's not on, on that type of time she stunned them emails she just wanted to see how you was and to check up on you so Tell her um, that I love her and I miss the kids. Okay, I tell her that. But yeah, that lady, she's not, she's not with all this. So. Did she say that I was lying? Oh, uh, she don't believe you. She's not feeding into that. She, what do you mean she doesn't believe me? And she that's all right. When I open up my um when I open up my email, I publish the emails that I sent to Azim and I'll make sure that everybody can see that I sent it to her. I'll post up both of it. That's it. That's all. Right, we'll see. I've already
those emails. I've already seen those, and I've already. I've already seen those. We've already seen that's those not that yet. Yeah, well, then if you saw it, you saw that wasn't me threatening anybody. Those were threatening emails that I got about the children in that house, which I sent like to the adults in that house. But that email came from some email that was not credible or identified, but it looked like doesn't it matter. Email. It was sent to me and I forwarded it. Uh. Anyways, um, Genesis, I can't say credit for an email I didn't write. Whether it came from a faulty, a weird, a janky email, all I could do was forward it to the people that it addressed and warn them that people were out to get them. See, that's what a friend does. A friend warns you when trouble is coming. Hey, what about you? Period. Bye, Puts. Bye, Toots. Bye. Goodbye. You got right. your okay. You had your fun. Gen Gen Let me say okay, hello, Gen Genesis. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you a minute to say it, Delaney. I'm gonna give you my final thought, and then I gotta ask Jack this, and we're gonna move forward. Before any email or anything was brought up, or me getting on any panels, Jack went on her own panel. And, and said that I tried to, I killed my child's father. She made this elaborate story to where I was there and I saw him fall to the ground and all this other lie, right? So I went on Sean Davey Wade to defend myself. And then that's when all this, well, you need to be careful because whatever, blah, blah, blah. and she was calling Azim, calling Shaka all night long, calling him in the middle of the night. Then after that, she, um, she called me at 11 o'clock the day that she got arrested. Cause after, after that point, you know what I'm saying? I was like, you know what, I'm gonna let it go. But when she called me that morning, she wished death on me. She said, you better watch out because CPS is coming and this, that, the other. I sent Shaka the email and this, that, the other. So bottom line is, is that she don't, she might say that, oh, I sent it to Azina and Shaka, I wasn't the one who did it. But bottom line is at that point, when you're wishing death on me and saying all you do is sit there and drink beers, okay. All right, I just sit on the computer and just drink beer. That's why I got what I got in this life, right? is I just sit around drinking beer. That's all I fucking do. But bottom line is, is that when she wished death on me, she did all this. I said, you know what? What the fuck do I look like keeping a bond and putting my name on stuff and this, that, the other? She said, we are not friends. So, okay, we're not friends. Why the fuck do I got my name on a bond? Why do I got you bonded to my address to make sure you get out of jail? And if you didn't want to get out of jail, okay, fine then. Guess what? Go back to jail then. You said you didn't want my help. Okay, then. Guess what? Help me. Gone. You done? Go back to jail. You done? Yeah. You're a liar. Yeah, I don't blame her. Wait, one second. You're a liar. Shit, I don't blame You're a liar. You Wait, excuse, me. Excuse, me. Nope. Did, did excuse me. excuse me. No. Excuse me. You're a liar and you're a fraud. You're a liar and you're a fraud. I never threatened to kill you. I told you you are going to get and reap the benefits of everything you've sown. What I did say about my friend, because see, your baby daddy was my friend. I wasn't just some groupie he was fucking that was trying to make a name in the game. I was his friend. We toured together. I lived with him day after day after day. I know things about him. You never will. What I will tell you, what I will, excuse me. What I will say is, is, is this. When I get my phone back, I am going to publish all of the text messages that you sent me, all of them. I want people to see the thread, 40, 50 text messages before you get one response from me. And most of my responses was only one or two words. I never text you back. Do you know what that is? That's obsessive. And do you know how I know that's who you are? Because you used to bother Batin the same way. I never said you were standing over his body at no crack house. I never said that. I, excuse me, stop cutting me off. I let you speak. Let me speak. I never said any of that. What I said was, is that you annoyed him so bad. You were such a bugaboo. You drove him crazy. And he started smoking crack again because of all of the stress that you brought into his life, attaching your name to his because he was a star. Just like you tried to attach your name to mine because that's what you do. Be well. You had your fun. Now it's my turn. Touch. Okay, Take your Peter right. fucking gripping ass out. All right, we, we gotta move on. One second, one second, Genesis. One second, I'm muting y'all. Genesis, 
you 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 not gonna be respected. You are just gonna be hitting the wall. You've been on this platform. This everything that you said that Jag did to you. I believe most of it. I'm not finna sit here and count. But what is it? You understand what I'm saying? And you have a helpful, kind spirit. And sometimes when you do that, you got to be willing to let those people go that came into your life. And you got to be willing to be like, you know, I'm going to walk away from this shit. Why you think they don't talk about Nikki no more? Why? And she ain't showing up. Why you think they don't talk about Goomba no more? They don't show up. But it seems like Genesis, you are always looking for an opportunity to speak your piece and it's becoming redundant. Jaguar is never going to respect you. What happened, happened. That's over with. It's over with. I just do not like false shit being put out about my child's father. And bottom line is, when she was with him, it, I wasn't even with him for like years after. And this thing that she's talking about, there's two children's brothers of about ten. So when she was with him, and she's and, and this so-called text message like bothered him on text messages and bringing him to crash and this that the other. That shit was not me. I was with him later on. She wasn't even around. So I don't know what the fuck she's talking about. Well, girl, don't Jag don't, don't give a fuck talking. about the merits. Of believe what, what you want to believe that shit was over two decades ago. Sounds like it's time for you to move on. It's time for you to move, move on. Move. Right, Genesis, oh, yeah. Genesis, we, we literally are, are going to move on. I appreciate you, much love. I, I appreciate the help that you gave me. Prepare. Darkness is coming. Who drops? Oh, I'm, 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 the only, I'm the only one who can drop somebody. She just clicked off. I don't know what happened, but I didn't drop her. Y'all see my hands right here. Moving forward, let's let's get to the don't, last don't, last don't, don't another one bites the dust, and another one bites, and another one bites, and another one bites the dust. Mm, mm, Girl, you need to stop mm, gaslighting mm, these people. That's why they become. I'm not gaslighting nobody. I don't lie. I tell the truth. Don't be mad at me because I am willing to be completely honest about everything that I say and everything that I do. I have not denied anything that I've ever done. I have not side side step. Matter of fact, I've doubled down and spent and stood ten, ten, ten Oh my God! All ten toes down. Period. These people are liars. They are frauds, they are clout chasers, and I'll prove it one by one. Bring up the next liar. No, we ain't doing that. We can ask these two questions and get the fuck up out of here. Girl, Genesis, go. No, I'm not bringing you back up here, Genesis. I'm sorry. I'm, not. I'm, not. I'm, not. I just, I, I'm trying to move on. Uh, this is shit right here. It's no, it's not funny. Now nah, you're making me feel bad, feel like I'm picking a side and feel like I'm laying up. I just, um, girl, why did you come back? Why did you even come up here? Like, I'm just, I'm, I'm sorry. I can't. It's time to move on. Girl, you just She's trying to, to promote that. her YouTube move channel. Go, go subscribe to her YouTube channel. Go subscribe to Genesis YouTube channel so she can. Please, because it's lonely over, over there. It's lonely. <laughs> okay, so. um That poor content ain't got no viewers. Jack, this is my last two questions. Um, okay, so there's there's evidence and there's videos out there where you say you've been giving birth since I think thirteen or fourteen, right? Fourteen. So, fourteen. Were you touched by anybody in your family? Yes, I was. At what age? I'm not talking about Jamie. At what age? When I was young, Uncle Candy Man. When I, be, I mean, I don't even talk about spell? that. Oh yeah, he did. He did yeah, it to but, most of the children in the family. You know, they kept letting him come to church, even though they knew he was a pedophile. And sometimes he would corner some of us off after uh, children's um, offering. And you know, if you carried the basket, then he would come and he would flash his penis at you and stuff like that in the church. And then say, if you said anything, he's gonna kill you. You know, my family dealt with Candyman. Um, my sister, she was greatly abused because my mom used to drop her off to get babysat by him all the time so my my sister caught the brunt of it i only you know i got the flashing and a little inappropriate touch but it's not like um um he did it to me when i was four and when i was five and then once when i was six and then the whole scandal hit the family church um did your mama know about that yeah everybody knew everybody knew so Everybody that's why, and, and what I'm getting to is, you know, sometimes when this happened in the black communities, the mother might know something about it and could feel guilty for the rest of their life. Do you know what my mother said to me when I asked her? 
why yeah. he, she didn't speak up for me when um Jamie Wallace all worded me. She told me I needed to not complain about it. Um, it happened to her a lot more than it happened to me. And that I shouldn't complain about it because it didn't happen as often and I needed to get over it. That's what my mother said to me when I was 34 years old. So do you harbor so, any because of that? Listen to me. I love my mother. She's a complicated woman. She's also a highly, um, you know, her, her survival extinct, like instincts are very, very high. But she's traumatized. My mom been through a lot and I learned to forgive my mother throughout the years. Um, I would be lying to say that there aren't things cause there's a lot of other stuff that happened in our family that I will not talk about. Like that's the thing that pisses me off. The stuff that I said was so mild compared to all of the stuff that actually happened. And they went ballistic over facts and over reality when there was so many awful things that I could have talked about. Um, I love my mother. I forgave my mother, which is why my mother has always lived with me and lived with me up until I was forced to be arrested. But let me ask and you now, a question. I'm not, and now, Jack, wait Jack, a minute. Oh. What? My, I want to ask a clarifying question. You said your mother lived with you, forgave her, she lived with you. Do you somehow feel like because she was guilty about that, you took advantage? Absolutely not, so because I gave my mother more than she'll ever give me. I've given my mother over four million dollars in the course of 30 years. This is why I find it funny. My mother has had access to my money all my career. I always made sure she had an account. See, this is what's even funnier. When my sister used to drain my mother dry to get high and get drunk and run the streets, my mother would come back to me to get her bill money. And Shelly knew that. I would never give Shelly no money like that, but she would drain our mother and then I would replenish it. When my mother's house went up to for, for foreclosure on four different occasions, I'm the one that paid it out my pocket. I paid four, by the age of 25, I was paying four mortgages. Like they know all of this. They wild, yo. They wild. So I did nothing but take care of my family. Me and my mother are partners. My mother has had a 5% business ownership in whatever business I've ever had. When I finish blowing Daladelphia back up, her shares are going to be amazing. She's going to be a very wealthy old woman, which is why we invested all of the annuity dollars, which by the way, two thirds of that money was mine. So let me ask you We invested it into the company. And, and guess what? My mother's name was on that business account. So she had just as much access to that money as I did. More importantly than that, I'm the one that paid all my mom's bills. I'm the one that paid all the rent. I'm the one that made sure everything was done. I took her to all her doctor's appointments. I took her to church every week, even on the weeks I didn't go. I'm a great daughter. I just don't need to brag about it and do social media posts proving that I actually care about her that I send to bloggers. So let me ask you Everybody, this question. Listen to me. Everybody knows this. And guess what? I hope you had your fun. I hope you enjoyed your five minutes clout chasing off of somebody that you say is a nobody. Since I'm so terrible, since I'm so awful, since I'm so nobody, stop talking about me. And guess what? Mm -hmm. I will tell whatever part of my life story I choose to when I choose to. To because it is my life. If you did not want to be a part of my story, you shouldn't have worked so hard to be a part of my story. So let me ask you this. This is my final question for you, Jag. Um, so given the fact that Fucking you losers, man. Like I'm tired of losers. Girl, if you don't let me get my question out. I'm sorry, um, go ahead. So with all of this, you know, trauma and what you've been through and being partners with your mom, is this why you feel entitled to her social security check? I'm not entitled to anything. And what's funny is people keep talking about that check. 
My mother eats better than anybody. I cook meals for her every day. Anything my mother wants or needs. Matter of fact, I don't even know how many times. I don't even know how many times my mother's had to say, Jackie, you take such, you, you work so hard and you take care of us. Why don't you go get your nails done? I'm like, no, mom, we're going to save that money because I got to invest in this. I got to invest in that. And I want to make sure everything is cool. Like everybody that knows me knows I'm not a money crazy person. I don't get no fuck about money. I don't have to. I am the money. If I want money, you know what I do? I open up my mouth and I sing and thousands of dollars drop out the sky. And it's been that way for three decades plus. Stop insulting me, yo. I can walk up to any club that I want, make a deal and make $5,000 in one night. Can any of y'all hoes do that? I think not. Stop. If I want to so, sit in a studio, if I want to sit in a studio and sell hooks all day, I can make five G's at fifteen hundred dollars a pop. I don't have to tell nobody how I get my bread. That ain't nobody's business. What I think is weird is that I don't talk about money. I don't talk about how much money I've made, how much money I've given, how much money I've done. But everybody else got all of these figures and all of these facts that they run around telling everybody from panel to panel. You're fucking weird. You're fucking weird. So let me. So your your family and a lot of people on the internet are under the impression that you only want to see your mama to, to take her money. Listen to me. That is not true. My mother is my business partner and she's been my business partner for eight years. Matter of fact, why don't you ask people in my family how many of my shows? My mother collected the money for for about five years straight. I shut down all my bank accounts because I went off grid and every performance that I did. That money went into my mother's bank account. All, all she would do is send me money on the road, whatever I needed. And she kept the rest to take care of the household. It's been that way for years. And they know this. But guess what? I shouldn't have to defend it because it ain't nobody's business. Period. Keep my name out your mouth. I will tell my story. If you worked hard to be a part of my story, don't be mad at the part you played in it. I never abused my mother. I've only taken care of my mother since I was a kid. I used to leave a shoe. In my mom's closet. I would put 10 G's in it. I would tell my mom. Hold on to it just in case I call you. And I need bail money. If I don't call. You can spend whatever's in that shoe. That shoe stayed full for five years. And my mom spent shit all the time. Called me up. Jackie. Well I was taking Giovanni's school shopping. Where are you? My mom in Amsterdam. Okay. Well is it okay if I go to the shoe. Because I need a new washer and dryer. And blah blah blah. Alright mom. Do what you gotta do. See so, that's the kind um, of child I've been. No. That's the kind of child I've been. And if people are going to start talking about money. They need to start proving evidence of the receipts. Of how much money they gave my mom. You want to talk about how much mom. Uh, how much mom, how much money my mom got? How about how about you talk about how much money you took out of my mom's pocket? Because the true reason that me and my sister fell out is that when we moved to Dallas and I took all of our bank accounts and incorporated them, Shelly was mad because she couldn't keep hitting up mommy for money no more. And she called mommy no. one year and asked mommy for money. And mommy said, Jackie said, no, it's not in the budget. She got mad at me and started talking shit about me behind my fucking back. The only person that's worried about my mom's money is the only bitch that spent up all my mom's money which is why she didn't have no money in her retirement and I had to replenish it so she could get the money that she gets now fuck well, off I Michelle fuck off Michelle fuck off Nicole Allen you're a federally convicted fraud you Nicole, spent years in prison you lived in that halfway house for seven months and you had to go to probation just like I did when I copped to plea the first time my ex-husband came after me you had to pee in a cup just like me only difference between you and me is I had a misdemeanor and you had a felony and you're a federal felon you lying ass Monica Lockett lock it up 
Samuel Douglas Odom. Samuel Samuel Douglas Odom. We divorced in November of 2011. Maybe you should remember that and move on. All of these niggas is cloud chasers. And they've been cloud chasing me since before social media. And I will never answer any of these questions ever again. You want to know why? Because they don't exist. To me, they don't exist. They're gnats. They're flies. They are roaches that I exterminated out of my life a long time ago. Numbers don't lie. Check the scoreboard. I am and you're not. Now move on. Oh my God, Jack! Um, um, thank you so much for being here. And once again, um, you know, anybody stream this content, you get a copyright strike in real time. And everybody who's been streaming Jaguars content from her and TJ Page, y'all won't be able to go live in, a, in tonight or tomorrow. Um, you oh, know, by the way, can I say something to you tonight? Yes. I'm so glad I'm getting to know you, kiddo. Unlike most of the people that grace this panel tonight, I'm happy that I was here to see you do your thing. I know what you were trying to do, and I appreciate it. But they invented a term called lost. Listen to me. They they invented a term called lost cause for a reason. Embrace that. Now, what I can say is, is this: me and TJ are very happy. That you've come on to be our channel manager. And with all of your knowledge and expertise, we're really looking forward to learning from you. Thank you for making yourself available. Thank you for accepting my apology. And I'm looking forward to getting to know you better, kid. Okay, Jay, you got me I think your career on YouTube is going to be really bright. I and um, it. And I pray for you. And... Whatever else is going on in the YouTube verse, understand this. Some people I fuck with. Some people I don't. It's my choice. I get to choose. And I'm choosing to get to know you, Donat. And I apologize for any wrong thing that I've said. And let me let me put it in, in words. I apologize for saying that you were an AIDS patient. I was misinformed. And I was in my feelings because I thought you were harassing me and attacking me because of the content you did with Gerald. I was mistaken, and I am sorry. Jay, we already didn't talk about this. We don't need to That's going. not the point. It's one thing to talk about it behind the scenes. But it means so much more to make a public show. And I want everyone to hear me apologize to you. I appreciate you, Jay. And I apologize to you as well. Um, I was fat. Some things that I said, as a matter of fact, let me make something clear. Um, your your family, beyond the scope of anything else that we've discussed here, your family has not said anything. I do know for a fact that your family loves you and it actually hurts them to love you so much and to see what's going on and to be gaslit and, and all of this other stuff. Um, your family warned me that this would be pointless and I and I told them, hey, no, you know, I wanted to come to Jesus moment here. I swear to God I did. And that requires that's accountability you. and honesty. A lot of lies were told here. And they've been okay, the same Jack, lies they've been telling me for years. All right, Jack, this is what I'm gonna tell you. This is what I'm gonna mm -hmm. tell you. Whether it's on social media or behind closed doors. You need to get a grip of yourself and ask yourself why and keep asking yourself why. And at the end of the day, guess what's going to happen? You're going to have to look at yourself in the mirror because the, the real reason. I already done that. I already done that tonight. And when I know I've already done that. Listen to me. I'm 46 years old. I've been dealing with these people all of my life. Two of the people that showed up on the panel. One of them, I, I watched her coming into the world. Okay, this is my these are the people that I tried to have a relationship with. If I no longer find value in it, that's my choice. I don't find value in these people. 
I find value in the people that I hold dear. And unfortunately, I don't hold any of them dear any longer. There was 30 years of loving, caring, near and dear where they backstabbed me, tried to rob me, stole from me, took advantage of me, and I never said nothing. But, but the thing about it, if Jane, I, I think listen to me, is at my age, if I want to be done with something, God damn it, I have the right to be done with it. Not and I'm done, done with it. And these people gonna feel reluctant to defend it. Listen to me. Listen. I hear what you're saying, sweetheart. I'm telling you, they can do whatever they want to do. From this point forward, I'm making it very clear. I have released all of you from any responsibility of loving me, caring about me, missing me. I'm releasing you from all of that. Consider no, no, yourself no, no, free. No, no, I'm serious. I'm being Sorry. honest. No, yeah. I'm being I'm, You don't get okay, it. Okay. And you don't I have to. I, I'm saying I am done. I am done. I want nothing I to do it. with any of them. I am done. Jay, and I have the Jay, right to be done with whoever I want to be done with. You you you, you absolutely do. So, and I sp and I spoke on it briefly at the beginning of this video. Uh, Jay, this is what I'm going to say to you. Um, mm -hmm. If you're seriously done, just move on and be blissful. Move on in peace. TJ's right there to support you. You got people supporting you. And a lot of Absolutely. people on YouTube will be reluctant to helping you out and seeing the positive if you can actually move on. I feel like it's my spirit. This is why I started talking about you because before my sister uh, passed away, she was very much acting the same way as you. And regardless of anything, and she kept going in cycles, cycle, same cycle, same cycle. When you're not growing, I'm afraid. I'm afraid that you're cutting. I've grown by short. leaps and bounds in my entire I, life, and my life is not measured by the value of relationships I no longer consider relevant. I can what, love what, you and not fuck with you. I can love you from afar. Listen to me. Right. I'm done. I'm done. Please. They have been nothing but a burden to me my entire life. I am done with you. burdens. They are burdens. You. They are stones around my neck. Let you. me go. I have let you go. Let me go. Leave me alone. Jack, no, you're me, I want to be left alone by these people. Right. And I'm asking to be respected. We get for it, my Jack, but, choice. But the thing is, Jack, you still listen. And I and I think I told you this, or and I think I told your sister this when I was talking to her. Um, there are certain things that my mother did to me. There are certain things people did to me. And the more I focused on that, the more hurt, the more anger, the more projection I had, the the the, the, the darker I was, and the more I didn't I was focus upset. on it. Do you know what I did? I became Jaguar right. I did everything that I could do to get away from those people because they were nothing but anything toxic, period. You don't know my whole life. And that will be reserved for my book. I am, I am no longer answering any questions about those people that I happen to be blood related to that I have no relationship with. Most of them I have not seen in a half a decade or better. They are strangers at this point. Goodbye. Be well. And keep my name out your mouth. I, I, I'm afraid of you, Jay. And you know Please what? do. I, you know, and while you praying for me, pray for them niggas because they came up here and lied about everything. Pray for them. They need prayer. They need prayer while they're sitting there hiding people's pocketbooks and phones and mamas and shit. They need prayer. Talking about a child you never adopted as if he even liked you because he whooped your ass, Sam. Okay, but, okay, talking but about talking about a friendship that never existed, Monica. Talking about a business relationship and a friendship that was never anything more than superficial, Nicole. These people are people in my life that have the smallest value. And yet they get the most attention when there are really awesome people in my life that you should talk to. You know, it's always so interesting when when TJ meets my real people. 
because my real people have a completely, completely different attitude about me than these niggas who, who clout chase and troll me online. Let it go. Some relationships, it's just best to let them go. Jack, do me a favor. Do me a favor yeah. and then we can talk. And this is after this. You're there, right? I'm where? When we get off. Wait, no, where you're at. You're saying let them go and all of this stuff, right? Yeah. When we get off, when we get off of here, which we need to, because, girl, you done woke me the fuck out. Let's be clear. You um, shit, you. It's a good thing I'm on bond, because right now I'd be drinking and smoking it up. <laughs> So, uh, no, keep asking yourself why, 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 I do. why. Do not, I do, and I meditate on it. And do you know what the universe tells me? Be free. I'll I don't get what? freedom. I don't, it says be free. When I meditate, that's what my soul says to me, be free. I don't belong to these people. I only belong to God. Don't nobody get to claim me but him. And Jack, he God gonna call you back home if you don't stop your behavior. Listen to me. God marks the numbers of my days. I know what my job is. I know what my role is. Me and my maker are just fine. Pray for those lying niggas that just got up here clout chasing. Pray for them. Pray for the ones that's worried about clicks and views and colorism and who's hot and who's not. Pray for the ones that are too afraid to actually get online and speak. Because they know they could say nothing but lies. Talk to the ones who like to sit there and play telephone tough guys and text message tough guys from chat to chat. Pray for the ones that are so addicted to being on camera. They don't care if they're being embarrassed while they're there. Pray for those people. Because they sound like they need prayer. Nobody would be talking about any of these people if they couldn't mention my name. And that's a fact. You wouldn't care about a Lachelle or a Jamie or a Jasmine. You wouldn't care about a Monica. You wouldn't care about a Nicole. You wouldn't care about a Gerald. You wouldn't care about an Icky Nicky. You wouldn't care about a Nicole Allen because none of these people were anything until they were able to drop my name. And those are facts. Period. I ain't gonna lie. These these people are connected to you, but you um, do not get mentioned. You don't get mentioned on YouTube unless the content creator puts my name first. Goodbye, be well, and go get a life of your own. Have your name in thumbnails without mine. I dare you. And y'all like this video? Please like this video to shout out there in the bushes and the ghoul and all of that stuff. Um, like this video. Got too many people. And about Every time I get a new man in my life, my ex husband and Talib Kweli pop up. It is pathetic. <laughs> pathetic. Like, oof. I'm an ex. I used to be with her. I'm an ex. Fuck out of here with your corny ass. Move the fuck on. All right, Jack. We gonna we gonna let you go. Please be safe. I'm sorry. I, I don't you. mean to be smacking. I'm eating this shoe. My is delicious. Um, Jack. You know I'm gonna call you and I'm gonna give you the real, real, real. Um, you know I. Tell Please, you. you can give me the real, real. It's fine. I'm listen um, to me. I am cool with everything I do. I am too old. I am too old to be worried about what was. I, I, I don't know how many days I have left, but I'm approaching 50. That means I probably have less than I've already lived. I'm focused on that. Oh, and Mo Love, yes, she is. If she not the T, why you pulling up and piling up everywhere? And them and them and them uh, and avatars, y'all, y'all, y'all not gonna be able to go live for about two weeks. I'm making sure that by tonight or tomorrow. And if you scream my shit, you're going down while you're streaming. Calling on struggle channels. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. your views aren't all that impressive. 
no, whoa, that what you gonna do, what you gonna do about it, what you gonna do, what you gonna do about it, ooh, mm -mm. yeah, see, I, I gotta go into the studio and finish that record, yeah, what y'all doing this week, what y'all doing this week? The devil for real, because everybody can be mad at you until you start singing, just like the yeah. devil. You better stop. I am a fool with it, but thank you. I'm gonna eat the rest of my food, and um, and yeah, me and Teach got stuff to do. So uh, we love you. Please call, check in, and I'm so grateful. Can we can we get a like a round of applause or a shout out to TJ? Because if it wasn't for her, none of this would be happening. Oh, hell no! Don't <laughs> <laughs> love you guys it was lovely meeting everyone on the panel and those who i don't love you know be well okay bye i wanted to tell you something i wanted to tell you about i was so oh she left already i wanted to tell her how fascinating and great it was that she I wanted to tell her it was great that she could apologize. This was my first time ever hearing Jaguar apologize. And tonight, I definitely feel like you deserve that. I thought that was great Girl. to see. No, Jag need to apologize. She already did that. I'm, I'm moving forward. She, yeah, we perfectly. need to get Jag to we need to get Jag to the level where she can apologize to herself, which means taking accountability mm -hmm. so that she can genuinely apologize to those people that she hurt, whether they want to accept it or not. That's the purpose of me doing this. I still have hope and I'm very optimistic about maybe it will manifest into what it is. I know y'all probably calling me delusional or whatever, but that was my point, you know? So, um, yeah. And Genesis, she just don't fuck with you. Let it go. Let it go. That's, that's what it is. Let it go. Let it go. Whose mic is that? Is that esoteric? Okay. Esoteric, how are you doing? Oh Lord Jesus, I need to drink. Any girl, any final thoughts? <laughs> oh Lord, you know, yeah. my final thought is just probably about everybody else's final thought. It's like I was trying to focus on what the question or the answer was that was asked, but it's like there were so many different tangents that were thrown about to where. I found myself getting lost in the conversation and then I was like, okay, focus, focus, focus. And by the time I started to try to come back and focus and, and it, 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 oh, Jesus. Genesis, don't worry. That, that you talking about them people that do them 12 hour lives? Yeah, that's, we got a trick for them. Because see, yeah, we got a trick for you. Why are you dropping Dooku? No, I didn't say that. I, I don't know. You got some misinformation, Misty. Yeah, in it. And Misty, you dropped so much knowledge in the chat. I have to go look about that goofer and what it is to put the dust on you and all types of stuff. Goody, God, Lord Jesus. Do not, I just want to say your heart is in, was in the right place. Um, this, this, this show, it wasn't a complete debacle or, or whatever, but I mean, I'm, I'm sure <laughs> some things did get answered. You know what the, the, um, the, the lights within this show for me was and the fact that she didn't have to be provoked i know you said just like me when you know we talked about it behind scenes but i even still did it um online when i was like you know thanks for da 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 da, da. when she apologized that was very very big of her so that that is i guess maybe the one thing <laughs> that i want to highlight oh. but as a positive instance throughout um this whole interview, the fact that she did uh, apologize as far as, you know, the things that she was saying about you in the beginning. So that right there was just like, wow, like that made my day. So I thought yeah. that was a good thing. Honestly, I did. Um, thank you. Um, uh, Don't be listening to no incredible, don't be listening to a source that deserved to be added as a defendant in the lawsuit. I don't know where they're getting information from, what type of narratives that they're spinning. I have had private conversations with Jack while advocating for Dookie Way, and I never budged. So I don't know Robot, what you're talking. About. Look, Robot made a whole live about you dropping Dookie from the lawsuit. Oh, she mad? She didn't he, he drop that bitch is treacherous. She ain't getting dropped, and he ain't dropped Dookie. Thank you. She she did it for numbers the same way she pretended I attacked her and made all y'all believe all of this shit just so she can put out bullshit lies playing with people real life in public records 
stay aligned. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? But yeah. um, don't believe me. That is not a credible source. And, um, you know, stream on and she gonna get struck out for using other people's content to send some of the games she played. We don't care about her over here. Uh, I already called the Charleston, late Charleston Police Department and the FBI and made reports on Daniel Elizabeth Allen that that's who she really is. But actually, she ain't got shit to worry about. Because the games I play is gonna be a slow burn. They're gonna ask King Payne why he pulling out his dreads or on Twitter crying and he ain't go live for two, three days because he don't know what to do. He need to hit the law library. And as a matter of fact, I need to do another live stream. You all, um, please hit me up. I'm gonna put my email in the description in this video. I've been getting receipts showing people sent King Payne money for Jaguar right, and she never seen a dime of it. Absolutely not. And we got the receipts from the three hundred dollars on June eighth sent to the GoFundMe account. Um, and Jaguar ain't seen a dime of it, and the lady been out of jail since past June eighth. So we call it these frauds. Uh, don't believe nothing that's coming out of their mouth. I don't talk about these people. These people are doing things for clicks and views. And it's a shame that they try to call other people like me. You are a succubus because you literally are attaching yourself to me with a reckless disregard. Don't believe shit that they got going on, the shit that they say. Absolutely not. Y'all invisible avatars. Most of y'all are black women. That is, y'all don't deserve to be respected because y'all are some of the most disrespectful motherfuckers. I'm tired of these 12, 13 hour live streams that's getting nowhere for keeping the mess going. And it's mostly black women. Yes, I said it because it's the goddamn truth and we all know it. You keep a mess going. You don't have no solutions. You don't have nothing. And you disrespect it, embodying another black woman. But you want somebody to respect you when thousands and thousands of people see how you treat another black woman. Go get go get a pap smear because none of y'all, 67% uh, of the black women are suffering from HPV. And I'm pretty sure some of them that do these 12-hour live streams, they ain't got no man. They ain't got nobody to touch on because they stink and pumping now. Now go get a motherfucking pap smear. And leave me the fuck alone and stop lying on me. But anyways, um, yeah, shout out to y'all for being here as a Terry. Thank you so much for pulling up. Thank you, E. I haven't seen E in months. <laughs> no, I've been working. I've been graduating. I've been trying to advance because, you know, that's what life is all about. But I will make sure I'm in attendance from now on. Please forgive me. No. Yeah. No problem. I'm like, you missed the worst of it because they did the worst to me. Wasn't nobody here. Wasn't nobody here for me but as a Terry. I don't remember. You want to add one thing though? I, myself, I felt a little bit like, wow, that's condescending. But I was like, nope, nope. Maybe that's her verbiage. Let me just be the bigger person here. What's uh -huh. condescending? Kiddo. Oh, when Jack said that? Yeah, and I, I, I'm just being honest because I've used that before and I used it to be purposely condescending to somebody and they didn't catch it. But, you know, like, I don't know. I was like, I, I, I was just shocked. with me. I don't, know, I don't know, take a poll or whatever. And I'm not, you know, seeing that to open up a can of worms. I just want to know, was I the only one that felt like kiddo was that felt like, condescending? That felt like what? I put up a poll. You want me to put up a poll? What? What about a stripper poll? What? Yeah. You said you told me to put up a poll. Oh yeah. You mean you can put up a poll? I just thought, mate, you know, kiddo was a bit condescending. Like, you know, that was a nice compliment she gave you, or I guess maybe state. Oh, no, I didn't. I didn't, I didn't take that as. I didn't take that personal. I didn't put up a poll of that because I don't need nobody to convince me on how to think and what I think. I didn't take that personal. It just. So um, me, I'm just asking about the word kiddo, like son. No, no, I think um, I think people look at me because like I look fairly young for my age, and that's because I take care of my skin and all this other shit. And so people like there's people in the audience that I talk to, and they've adopted me as their nephew and all of this other stuff. So when I hear people say kiddo or nephew or son or something like that, it's just it's like a term of endearment, honestly. I don't take it personal. Okay. So be blessed. It was, it was slick shade. I don't think it was slick shade. I, I didn't see it like that. But anyway, can y'all get them likes up? Because you see, y'all y'all want to like and hate people to try to screen my content. They're gonna get a strike. I promise you. You know, um, 
But at the same time, can y'all like this video, subscribe to the channel. Um, this has been great. Um, a great sign off. Well, good night. This was a good live, kiddo. <laughs> 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 I just look young. That's what I take it as. I just look super young, you know. Yeah. No, no, I understand. Especially in in, in comparison, you're right. Well, when she yeah. said it, she paused right before, so I think she was uh, thinking of a good adjective to throw out, and that's the best one that came out. I didn't take that that way. Okay. When she said, when she did apologize, though, it made it got me to thinking about the nieces that came up, and I really wish that they they could have had a um, to right. This is why and, and I think that would have looked very good. I feel like she could have respected their opinion, even if she didn't agree with that, that that was their truth. And I felt that would have been a beautiful conclusion to that rather than ending with sour break. Yeah, it was. But no, and that's I think that's why she thought about it. She had to think about, it. I'm sorry, kiddo, as well. I'm thinking that, like, honestly, like, it's people... Like it was just somebody to say, did not reminds me of my nephew. He's thirty, so for her to say nephew or or son or or some type of endearment in correlation to family, I would have been taken aback. Girl, don't call me your family. The way you do your motherfucking family on the internet, I'm offended if you say I'm your nephew or whatever. You know, so I think when she thought about it, she had you know subconsciously figured, let me not call him anything in conjunction to you know niece nephew brother son or anything like that you know cousin or anything like that because of what's going on so i think kiddo was her way of it was her form of endearment because it wouldn't have been endearing for her to say that i remind her of my nephew or whatever because the way she just uh -uh, i'm sorry uh -uh, no thank you but no i didn't take it personal but y'all like this goddamn video and subscribe to the channel please and thank you and um Thank you so much, Eve, for coming up. I really appreciate you um, showing support. Hopefully you come back, even when I'm talking about real stuff, because I talk about real stuff <laughs> all the time. You know? I hope we'll be back. I didn't know that you were getting into it, though. You said uh, you were getting attacked. We're going to talk about that later. Oh my goodness! It's, it's child. That's I'm going to back channel. Um, I'm going to put my per I'm going to put my number in the personal chat. Call me. I'm not talking about this shit on YouTube. The best, the best, the best thing to do is be silent about people, you know some of these things. They're not. You're giving her too much room to hang herself. I see that I'm looking at you, but I'm smiling. Okay. Kiddo is better than tits. Poor Denat is draining. We love you, kiddo. Love you too, kiddo. <laughs> I am drained. I gotta get out of here. Thank you for coming up, E. It's all good. Talk to you later. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Appreciate you. Much love. Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, 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 yes. I am completely drained and utterly, you know, I don't know. But thank you all so much for being here. Uh, I hope it has, at the very least, so many thousands of people look at Jack Wire right on the internet and in, in conjunction to the narratives about her family, husband, and so forth. I hope I came in here with um, great intent. Um, a part of me, um, the crazy part of me, is still feel like there has been some type of progression made, even if that means people, um, smart people, can see the human within her and leave from that position and try to, you know go along with me and try to help the situation rather than antagonizing it. That's exactly why those people that don't show their faces streaming Jaguars content while well, I'm her account manager. So, and I know what to say and I know what to do. So buy treases, buy incoming, buy robots, um, try again in two weeks. Um, and definitely don't stream this one because you're going to get clipped in real time. Um, Cause I'm just that smart and I know how to do it. So don't play with me and stop, stop, going on 12 14 hour live streams just to pay your bills talking about and trashing another black woman um i think i've been extremely neutral um in this situation um i think at this point i don't know what else to say or do um same thing with goomba i've asked and answered or had clarification on my platform with anything involving him you guys can go back to that um, I think I've asked Jaguar these tough, tough, tough questions that other people in approximate to her has not asked her. 
because I was afraid she'd leave their platform or whatever. And that that honestly said that that was real, never really any respect between them. The fact that she was respectful enough to come up here and ask, excuse me, answer these particular questions that most people have not asked her um, said a lot. Uh, I'm definitely going to talk to Jag and give her my honest, unbiased, real, hardcore opinion once I end this live stream and, you know, go get me some water, go get me something to eat, um, you know, because I'm a realist, you know, and I appreciate everybody being here, man. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, please and thank you. Please keep coming back, especially when I talk about real shit. I got a whole content creation schedule and um, tomorrow we're going to be talking about mental health. We're going to be talking about sexual health. We're going to be talking about a lot of stuff. Um, I have a lawyer um, up in New York who works with a lot of uh, companies and who's um, sometimes on law and crime, that network. Uh, we're going to be talking about Ashley Grayson and that situation from a legal perspective, um, as well as King Payne from a legal perspective and what's going on with that. On Thursday, um, on, you know, we're talking about a, a bunch of stuff. We're going to be talking about Tom Holland, Finally becoming himself and showing how gay he is. We're going to be talking about that on Tuesday. We got a whole doc of content um, and we're planning it. So do me a favor in the description of this video is a link where you can submit a tip. I will go over that and look at the content that you sent me. And again, it doesn't matter if you sent it a week ago. It's not about who covers it first, but who covers it the best. And I strive to be the best. Like Pokemon, I want to be the very best. The train um is my cause. You know, when we had Jaguar up here, bless us so I'm gonna definitely pray for y'all. Pray for Jaguar. Y'all stop piling up in these discussions where people are literally triggering her, trolling her. You notice that we really wasn't in the chat, and the chat just required you to subscribe, and it's because I had to talk. You know, it's the same reason I went on somebody's platform last night because I wanted them to know that the people what the people are saying in the chat is completely irrelevant to me. What people are saying on your platform is completely irrelevant to me. So since I eat ramen noodles and live in the shoebox and you're homeless, why don't y'all do me a favor, send your boy cash out, dollar sign, deny, double oh seven, send me a super chat, a super sticker, whatever it is to support your boy. All right. Um, I love deny. Thank you. I appreciate you. Deny, can you take us back to the writer's strike again, please? It's the actors and a writer's strike. So, yes, I definitely will be doing that. I can't be like, do y'all not know how hot it is in California? It's hotter than Las Vegas in California. OK, let's be clear. Um, you know, it's hot. The night you still got to call me. I got some real business for you. Money, money, money. Yes, money. And shout out to Genesis. She is a plug. She is definitely a plug. She's been plugging me with some people um, behind the scenes. We might get some content out of Charleston White. We might get some content out of the people. So keep on coming back here. We Tomorrow, we're going to be covering something completely different. But it's really about the energy and the synergy that we create over here. So I appreciate y'all. Once again, thank you. You said, dude, you're going to do some incredible things going forward. I know I saw you the other night, and I knew you were worth coming back. So much love. Peace. Thank you so much, Alva. I really appreciate you for being here. Make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. The notifications, make sure they're turned on to always be blessed and say, I love you, but I'm not wasting no prayer on her. Child, please. Um, looking forward to it. And no, never been to Cali. I live in Mass. Yada, yada, yada. What's up? Shout out to my A1 Day ones. Put some stars in the chat, man. Put some, if you know you a star, if you know it's star studded over here, put some stars in the chat, please. And thank you. You know. It was 118 here in Phoenix yesterday. I'm trying to tell you. This live emptied the bushes tonight. That was epic. It didn't empty the bushes. It's some of them still over there. I think that they finished screaming my stuff. Please. Oh, yeah. Also, please join my Discord. Jag and TJ's, uh, their channel is in the description of this video. So click on it and subscribe to it. Um, and go over there. Because um, these people screaming their content. Y'all interested in them? Go over and watch them on their channel. Because if I find somebody streaming, Jag. Acquiring TJ's content, you you might as well call yourself a good as um, reporter. Even if you put it on private members only, I'm going to have somebody to go over there and make sure that we submit a report for copyright infringement against show up and ask. That's exactly what we're going to do for playing the real. You understand what I'm saying? But, anyways, there is my Discord link. You guys can communicate 
communicate with me about what's going on on YouTube. Send me videos. Let's talk all shit. Um, and again, any tips, anything you'd like me to cover, just click the link in the description. Day two, but still, yes, Adriana is a, you like you like a date ring because you came, you know, after the bullshit. Nigga, stop it! gonna keep me down forever. But look at God; it's all about the energy. Yes. Um. So I give special permission to two people to use this content. Um. That is Cat Medusa, who uh, is. My dog, she was a former mod. I did not fire her, but she'd be out there in these chats and all of that stuff, and I didn't want it to look and feel weird. So she is definitely up and coming. She can stream this live stream. I also talked to Jag and TJ. Cat Medusa can also stream Jag and TJ's content. Nobody else um, as of now. But as far as this video, um, Cat Medusa can stream it, and also uh, Healing Her can use this for content on her channel as well. Other than that, um, you're gonna get struck. So yeah, peace out. Do not do not I have a bone to pick with you, Ella. You ain't got no bone to pick with me, girl. Your birthday is on the 21st. What bone you got to pick with me? <laughs> and thanks for trying to protect me on the panel. I definitely understand what you was doing. Yeah, I wasn't scared. If Jack was gonna leave, bye, girl. Shit, we was asking a real question and then this shit get out there. Um, Medusa is a wild CCLL lover. Exactly. Y'all go subscribe to Cat Medusa. Let me um, um, let me drop a link to her channel. Um, to do this. Y'all can go to my community wall. So uh, subscribe to my channel, and whenever she decides to do whatever she do, and go over it. Um, go over there. She's very cool. She will let you on her panel. Y'all can pop shit, talk shit, do whatever you want to do. Um, so yeah. Go ahead and subscribe to Miss Cat Medusa Productions um, as she has exclusive rights to use this as well as TJ and Jack content as of now. And you know, Jack, like the flip flop sometimes, but as of now, um, that's the only person um, Jack wires allowed to scream her content or you're going to get struck. And that fair you shit, um, take it to court because YouTube don't care, especially if you or adamant about striking these people. You better go ask King Payne. But don't be no fool and actually go to court. You better go ask King Payne what happened. You try to take some shit to court. <laughs> but it's been great. It's been fantastic. Um, it's been draining and all of it. You understand what I'm saying? Keep in mind, you know, we are all stars over here, but there's one thing that can only be one. The chapter! I am T'Challa. Hey, what's up, YouTube family? It's Denot. I got big dreams to see the world and do what my heart believes. Everything ain't what it seems, so I'm here to tell you the truth about pop culture, hip-hop, and some of the most toxic shit across the web. Forget Charleston White. I'm the one. Like it or not. Better subscribe to my channel and like this video, because I'm not going to stop. I am T'Challa.